it would appear so. Seriously. We, uh, we just glitched bullets. zombies. But you need more bullets. It doesn't. I got a ray gun and an RPK. I can and socks here, so he can go get. He can run around and get max ammos. They're seriously only coming after me right now. Nice. You gonna play this stupid zombie game off podcast? Well, I mean, this is this isn't gonna require too much of my concentration because I'm like glitched under the map, kinda. Kyle's about to set a record. <laughs> Hutch is always talking about round 32. Kyle's going to be like round 232. Dude, we're on round 33 now. Hutch is <laughs> talking about 32? Yeah. Weak sauce. Oh, they say my mic is quiet. Wait, wait, is my mic quiet again? Uh, you sound perfectly fine on this end. Uh, a little quiet, a little quiet. Not for me. Just a bit. Mic is fine. All right. Yeah, it's not like before. I think before it was completely obviously bad. And uh, now it's okay. I'll just check my input levels. White boy scored eight gold medals this in the last two hours. How does what does that even mean? A gold medal. A white boy considers any game that it, where he goes big kills, low deaths as a gold medal championship oh, game. He's a gold medal championship gamer. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kimmy J is in the uh, in the stream here. The username is Kimmy J Cod. Is that that cross dresser? I don't yeah, think yeah. that's. He's, no, Kimmy J is the. Um, he, Kimmy J, I, I number one gamer. Like a, I, yeah, number one gamer. He's a big Asian guy. He's funny. <laughs> what a gamer tag, number one asshole. He, he's taking his name <laughs> from Cartoon. <laughs> that's the guy. Oh, we, you I know, we got to talk about your week, Woody. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's got to come up. I've had, uh, you had a bad one. storms on YouTube. Yeah, actually, you know what? It, so there are times when that, like, you know, overwhelming world turning against you on YouTube stuff actually can bother me. This week was super crazy to me at work. Like I, I had execute commit for my project, which is like the accumulation of seven months work or so uh, on Wednesday. And on Tuesday I had like a migraine and it hardly worked. And, and like a, all my hours have been consumed with real life. I just, you know, I, I keep my upload schedule, but I've been really consumed with normal life. And uh, like I come back, my video had 7,000 comments. Like a good video of mine will have like 1,500 or 2,000 comments. It said 7,000 comments. I didn't read crap. I was like, all right, yeah, this thing's going big, whatever. I've got some real work to handle. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of a good week for me to, uh, to hit the warmy. Oh, Joe's on. Dude. We're about to get Joe's on. Oh, you see El Crestor putting the video out, talking about you're not famous. Joe, what's up, man? What's going on? Uh, Presser putting the video out talking about. Oh, John little echo. echo. Oh, I think Joe's yeah. on the stream. He's, he's maybe you got to make the video. Yep. Me and Sarkis <laughs> about to go to round a hundred. <laughs> I can't believe you're gaming good. on the podcast. This is the Joe podcast, baby. What's going on, guys? He'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of questions for Joe. I've pre I've got questions prepared. I have questions prepared for Joe. Oh, I have questions prepared every week, but I've got questions prepared for Joe. You want to start ready. the podcast? We run so long. That, uh, yes, let's get it going. Yeah, Wings, do you want to take a minute and figure out your intro, or you got it already? Is this the UFC fighter? This is the UFC yeah. fighter. I don't have anything. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I expect him to be, like, flipping through a page of questions. Yeah, yeah, okay, mm -hmm, I'm prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I got nothing. Oh, you could be a handicapped person or a midget, you know. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Go. All right, all right. We'll, we'll we'll do this. Um. Oh, you know what? Let me um double check my Skype. I need to. This guy had any belts or anything like that? Nope. No belts. No no title <laughs> matches. Uh, not in the UFC. I see. Well, what would you say would be the pinnacle of your career at this point? Well, let's uh, wait till uh, the podcast starts. I don't know. I I got a, somebody I sent me a link. Undefeated. I knocked out the former champ, Jens Pulver, in my UFC debut. Uh, I was on are, the Ultimate Fighter. Are you still undefeated? No. Oh, this you must be a late pick. is undefeated. They don't, um, they oh, don't oh. pick fighters. Oh, I, I see how it is. It's 19-6 and 0. The, the middle one's a, the, the loss is okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Different things. 
I'm trying to I'm trying to work the angle here. You not need to lie to me. <laughs> Wings, you think for a second here. I need to actually hang up the call and call back because you have to start the call after you start call burner to record it. So uh, I'm gonna call you guys back immediately. All right. Cool. All right, we're all here. So, how did that go? Did you think of anything clever? No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I was sort of looking at his skill breakdown. He's got like 62% submissions, 29% takedowns, 9% striking. And I was sitting there wondering, like, what was, what is a, who's a striker then? Because he, every time I've seen one of these things, always been like mainly submission. Submissions are the smart way to fight. I'm gonna talk to you about that. It's definitely the smarter way to fight. I guess I guess somebody like Tank Abbott would have been considered a striker, right? Kinda. He's pretty bad. Anderson Silva. He, he's a good striker. Yeah, he's a black belt. But yeah, he's definitely a good striker too. And Tank Abbott was what, like a biker that liked to drink? I think <laughs> it was before the the skill revolution it, took over. Yeah. So Tank Abbott was the guy who just like ran you over, like swinging with both hands. Remember. I mean, when, I, when USC was like this outlaw thing, I remember seeing a Tank Habit video where he knocked this guy unconscious within like the first five seconds of a round. <laughs> it's a blue. Yeah. Apparently, he could punch really hard, but um, you know, compared to the guys that are in there now, he wouldn't. He wouldn't do well. He's like forty now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and it, it, you do, if you were to take a brand new Tank Abbott and drop yeah. him in there, Joe would crush Tank, and he's like giving him a hundred pounds. <laughs> Tank's a, Tank's a big boy. Yeah. All right, Wings, you ready to do this? Yeah, we we do something. All right, no one. You okay? I'm waiting for you to say yes. Oh yeah, okay, ready. All right, <laughs> five, four, three, two. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Wings of Redemption, and we're back with Painkiller already, episode forty-one. And now we have our first special guest of the night. It's your boy Joe Lozon. What's going on, buddy? Cool. How's it going? What's your name right that time? You got it right. Much better. <laughs> yeah, I was horrible. I'm not, and I'm the one. Anyway, so Joe, I know you do interviews all the time. You probably get this uh, every day. Hypothetical situation: You're married. Yep. You swap bodies with your wife. With your wife. Did you do it just to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, probably. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> my, my girlfriend's freaking short as hell. She's like weighs like ninety pounds. She's like five feet tall. It'd be a, 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 I'd see the world from a different height. That's for you sure. You'd see a lot of things from a different height. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there'd be a whole new thing going on there. No, uh, that would not be going on. That would uh, what? Be going on. No, 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 no. That, when I said, would you do it just to see what it's like, that was not a did you swap question. That was a <laughs> would you have sex question. Oh, no. No? No. You're in the female body, though. And it doesn't it's, matter. It's, and it's not gay anymore because you're but a girl. Your is Joe Lowe's on like the like the anal sex? Is that right reason? No, no. no. Wings, wings, man. This is a this is an honored guest. <laughs> this is not a YouTube celebrity. <laughs> but yeah, that was Ricky Chops's answer. Like it, with no hesitation, the guy goes, "Nah, she takes it up the butt. I can't do that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no way. No, yes, yeah, so. bodies. The sex is not something that would be happening. <laughs> but it's your body that you would be Doesn't having. Matter. Right? It doesn't matter. Yeah, Joe, don't go kidding us. We know you've had sex with yourself before, right? This is just taking it to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like, it's just like for the record, we're not week. CNN here. We do not do professional interviews for a living. <laughs> that means I don't have to watch language or any of that bullshit. No. 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 Hey, you guys want me to dig into the questions or, um, or you, do you want what? to go first? So here's what you, somebody up. asked this. They wanted to know if any other fighters are gamers. And, and I almost had So Nate Quarry, right? He's a gamer too, isn't he? Um, I don't know about Nate. I, I know a lot of different guys play Call of Duty though. Um, really? You know, I, don't know if they're, I don't know if they're super into it, but I know that a lot of guys, I mean, it, it's a good thing for downtime. I mean, like if we're in the gym all the time, you're constantly getting punched in the face, lifting, running, all that kind of stuff. You need something to just kind of hang out. More uh, movies get boring. So you go to Xbox, you know, things like that. A lot of guys play games. Man, I'm pretty sure. I think Nate actually became a Left 4 Dead character. Really? That's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not completely positive it was Nate Corey, but I think it was. And I know one of the USC fighters is one of the zombies in Left 4 Dead. Like they did, they brought him in, and I saw the whole thing where they did the, like the motion capture. It was pretty cool. That that is awesome. 
you know, I was a, uh, uh, I wasn't a zombie game, but they made the UFC game, and I got scanned for that and all that kind of stuff, which was pretty badass. What's that so, experience like? Um, it was pretty quick. They uh, they, they took photos um, to get like birth marks and tattoos and all that kind. Of, I have not neither of which. So what um, were you wearing? Just regular fight shorts, and then they just basically took it. Yeah, they had you stand in one spot and look. Like you know, turned so many degrees and took a whole bunch of pictures, and they did like um a, like a body scan that got like a three D rendering of you. That was, was pretty cool. The thing didn't take long, but it, it was pretty cool. Did you put on one of those like skin suits with the white balls on it? That, like, no, that you know they they do all that for all the motion capturing. Uh, mm -hmm. What we did is just you know stand there just so they can build it, the three D model of us. Mm -hmm. That was put it. Cool man. Huh. So but the, the so the UFC fighters they don't actually get paid for the UFC game. Like I think I heard Dana White talking about that. Yeah, no, no, we don't. I mean, it, it, honestly, it wouldn't be that much anyways. There's so many guys in there, you know, like, I don't know how many games it sold, but there were, you know, it would be a, such a small percentage anyways. We, um, most of the fighters sign, um, like, almost like a merchandise agreement. And, uh, you know, and, and you know, but the video game is excluded and all that stuff. But they can make, you know, jewels on T-shirts and action figures and whatever else they want. <laughs> but the, the other cool thing is, though, it gets you kind of well-known, like, you know, like any exposure you get is the next Mountain Dew deal that you might land or, or whatever. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, and who doesn't want to be in a video game? You know, like that was like the coolest thing. You know, up until that point, it was like I got the game in advance before it was even out. Um, you know, I got to play it. You know, it was. I mean, I'm in a video game, a couple of video games, two video games. So it's it's pretty badass. That's cool, be a video game. <laughs> You're on your way. Video game too. <laughs> You're on your way, Rush. You're on your way. Yeah, <laughs> Rush. <are> you. <laughs> I could see it happening. So here's another question I got. So to picture this coming from a gamer, how do you deal with the school bully? Um, you, you gotta learn. You gotta do jujitsu. You gotta learn wrestling. You know, it's like most guys that are bullies have no idea at all what they're doing. You know, like I have kids at my gym that like couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag, but they know a little bit of wrestling and they will get zero crap from anyone because they'll just dump the kid on his head. It's they'll it's win the takedown. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's way better than punching. You know, if you get a kid that's trying to bully you and you and you shove him or push him, they don't know that you double leg them into a locker versus, you know, but you throw one punch, you get in trouble. So hmm. I think wrestling's the way to go. I like that. Yeah, but it takes an actual, like, time investment, right? There is no afternoon you can spend that's going to help you beat a guy who has 40 yeah. pounds on you. You have exactly. to actually join the wrestling teams, you know, join a, a fight club or whatever and, and like, do it for real. And it's going to be yeah. three or four months before you've got any – you know, talent you can employ on a bigger guy. Or you right. can take the shortcut and use the math book. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I swear to God, that's what I was about to say. I was like, if you want a shortcut to beat up the guy that got 40 pounds on you, get yourself a rubber hammer. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, then, and he gets a rubber hammer, and it's just escalation. You know what I mean? Rubber hammer fights. Then you then everybody's doing them after school. So, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, so, Joe, I wanted to talk about the – when I watch the UFC, it seems like if you were to rewind – what seven years or so there were more uh you know, jiu-jitsu fights than now now it seems like guys are standing more often than they used to yep. do you think that's because it's an effective fighting style or because stand-up fighters get forgiven for losses or like what do you think in there um i think that like a long time ago like submissions are super easy to set up on someone that doesn't know what's coming you know but nowadays everyone's so you know well versed in the submission game it's much tougher to hit an arm lock. You know, it's not like, you know, the Hoist Gracie days when no one knew what an arm lock or a triangle choke was. It's, you know, this mysterious choke that no one understands. Now it's like everyone's putting in a ton of time. And it, it honestly, it, nowadays it comes down to who's the better conditioned guy, who's a little bit faster, who hits a little bit harder, and the fight starts on the feet. So, you know, people, you know, <laughs> you try to make a good first impression with that first punch you throw, and, uh, and you hope for the best. I got a like, question. Go ahead. All right. All right, and you're in a fighting situation – at what point do you do you uh, throw the first punch? I mean, like, like how do you decipher if you should go first or he, or you, do you always wait? In a, like a professional fight or, or anywhere? Anywhere. You know, I, I don't like the idea of throwing the first punch. I think that, you know, outside, you know, a lot of things can be avoided. You know, people seem to think that, oh, I had to do this or I had to do that. Or I'm not going to let him punk me. Uh, those are the stupidest things people can say. I mean, it's like, like even if I, I'm, I can definitely fight, but I wouldn't get in a fight in a bar. You know, because I could beat the crap out of the guy, and then his girlfriend bottles me or stabs me with a, you know, <laughs> so much, or his buddy that kicks you in the head or that stomps you from behind. Or, like, there's so much bad stuff that can happen. So, like, outside, I pretty much would never throw the first punch. You know, I, I think that there's, there's better ways to handle things. 
Um, during a fight, you know, I, I, um, I think you should always try and be, you know, be the aggressive one. You should try and get off first. You know, you don't want, but you definitely want to throw the first punch. Huh. So you want the first punch, but you don't fight outside the ring. Do you think guys that, that know how to fight, you know, the guys with some sort of training are less likely to get into fights? Oh, definitely. You know, I, uh, you know, someone was sending me a message on Twitter the other day saying how like their buddy saw Uriah Faber and they thought that he was walking through the club tough. So he started mean mugging him and thought they were going to throw it out. It's like Uriah would definitely not start a fight with you because you were looking at him across the club. You know what I mean? But the, the guy that's untrained that would probably get the crap kicked out of him was the guy that was going to start the fight. It's like <laughs> guys that train and fight for a living or even just train for fun, they get out all that aggression. You know, I get so many guys at my gym that, you know, they used to be, you know, punks. They were punk kids. And then they started doing jiu-jitsu and they get all, all that aggression. They get out all that energy. And they don't have to fight outside. And they get to, you know, let it all out in a productive environment where there's mats and it's safe and it's one-on-one. -on -one and you know what you're getting into. Not, like I said, out in a bar where, you know, you, or you hit someone even worse. You hit someone, you knock them out, they, they go down and hit the head on a, on a you know, a table or something. And they, you're in jail for manslaughter. It's just so many stupid things that can happen fighting outside. Hmm. So you're a purple belt, is that right? Um, Yeah. I mean, so I, I've been doing... Obviously, you... Right, you, you get the skill level higher than probably a lot of black belts. What made you stop, or like, what was you thinking there? Um, I, I never trained in the gi at all until I went out to Hawaii with BJ, and um, I trained a little bit, and I really didn't even have a belt out there. You know, he he would have given me a belt, but I, I just didn't do the gi enough to mm -hmm. get a belt. And then when I came when I came home, I decided I wanted to put a little more time in the gi, and um, I I, I got my. For, uh, let me interrupt you. For, for people that don't know, the, a gi is uh, like a thicker version of the karate pajamas that those guys wear. Yeah, there's a million different chokes and, and things you can do with the uniform, you know, against people. And uh, so I, I trained in Hawaii a little bit. I, when I came back, I started put a little more time in a gi. I got my blue belt, and then I blew up my ACL that night. <laughs> um, or I, I re-injured my ACL that night. And uh, so then I was sidelined for a while, and then I put a little more time in the gi, and I got my purple, and I, just, I haven't done it since. It, it's really, really tough to put in time in, in, in on gi, and then boxing and lifting and, and getting ready for fights all at the same time. It's just, it, it's real, real tough to do both. I didn't know about your ACL. Did you have it fixed? Did you have surgery on it? Yep, I, uh, I, uh, I did it in one of my fights, and then, uh, like, I was limping, like, real, real bad. It was a Jeremy Stevens fight. I tried to shoot in the beginning of the fight, mm -hmm. and I just fell over. And uh, I ended up winning the fight. And uh, I had a huge cut on my head, so I didn't train for a week. And then the first night I went back, you know, I got my, my belt at the beginning of the class. And then we started to try and train and warm up, and I, my knee locked up. And, yeah, so I did uh, an ACL replacement. I did the cadaver. The um, cadaver. I yeah. did the patella. You did patella. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't want to do patella because I, I heard it's, like, it's super painful, like, kneeling down and stuff. It's like kneeling down on, like, a tack or a marble or something. Um, it, so. it hurt. Yeah, <laughs> it hurt a lot. Did did they have you doing rehab the same day as the surgery? Um, no, I had surgery on on like a Friday, and then but I think I, I went and started my rehab like Tuesday or Wednesday. And yeah, uh, I I had surgery well whatever day it was, you know, I'll, I'll call it six a.m. Yeah. And by three p.m., they had my leg in this machine that was like stretching my brand new ACL. And yeah, I didn't I didn't do the machine either. I didn't do the machine either. I um. I remember, like, the toughest thing was when I woke up the next day after surgery and uh, laying in bed and, like, the blanket being so heavy that, like, I couldn't, you know, turn my leg over. You know, I couldn't I couldn't do the rotation on my leg. Like, trying to lift my heel off the bed was, like, the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. I eventually got it, but it, it, was, it was so tough. I was amazed that, like, I went from fighting main event in the UFC to a month later, I'm, I'm laying in bed and unable to move my leg. It was, it was pretty tough. It was a rough patch. It sucks, man. Yeah, my rehab lasted a long. It was like six months before I was. I don't know, even longer than that, like eighteen months, and it was still bugging me. You know, not quite right. Yep, I fought a uh, ten months after surgery. So I had ACL surgery, and then I fought. Later. That's, that's pretty that. fast. Yeah, that's pretty fast. How long have you been involved with MMA, like from the very beginning? Um, I think I started in like two thousand one. So like, it'd be like I think it'd be ten years, like this coming summer. Was it just like a hobby to begin with, or just something to just something to do? Like yeah. you know, some people do yoga, but you did. And ten years, how old are you, by the way? Twenty six. Twenty six. All right. Yeah. yeah how'd you get? I, I when I when I was in high school, I started when I was like a, I was a, a, a sophomore in high school, and uh, you know the, the WWF professional wrestling was huge. So uh, you know we would we'd all watch the pay per view, we'd watch whatever Monday Night Raw, and we'd end up like you know trying to like power bomb each other, choke slam each other, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I had a trampoline, 
So we would end up on the trampoline trying to kill each other. And um, <laughs> after, like, we, we've been doing that for, like, we were doing it for a while, like, maybe, like, a year and a half. And then uh, my school did horrible. Like, in Massachusetts, we have an MCAS testing, which is, like, it's, like, standardized testing, but it's, like, essay format, which sucks. And um, <laughs> my school did terrible on it. But then, then the teachers taught to the test. The next year, we did awesome on it. So, as like a reward, um, we got a, a bunch of demonstrations and assemblies and things like that. And uh, my trainer Joe Pomfret came here and did like a, a, a karate and jujitsu demonstration for us. And uh, the karate stuff was like, eh, whatever. But the jujitsu stuff was awesome. It was like what we were trying to do on the trampoline. He was doing. So it was like there's a legitimate system that we can, you know, actually do this stuff. So a couple of my buddies went and signed up, and then next thing I knew, I was getting choked out all the time. So I, you know, I'm super competitive. I had to, I, I can't let them have any kind of advantage on me. So I had to sign up, and it just, you know, it just started as a hobby, and then I, I kept doing it throughout all college, and uh, you know, and then eventually, you know, I was, I was doing amateur fights, I was doing pro fights, I was fighting in like Montreal, I was fighting in Florida, I was fighting all over the place, and then uh, I got the call to fight in the UFC. You get the free odds all to fight in the Ultimate Fighter, right? That was like the. Yeah. Well, I did. I I, got, I fought Jens Pulver first. Like they were looking for for him to knock me out, and then he was going to be the coach on the show. So they said, "Oh, this will be perfect. We'll get this kid that's got a, a a pretty good record. You know, Jens will knock him out, and then that'll hype him going into the Ultimate Fighter show with BJ Penn." And uh, I knocked out Jens, and then they told me right off the bat, "We want you for the show. It'll be good TV, things like that." So, so I, I went on the Ultimate Fighter afterwards. A little nice. back. Yeah, actually, I remember now that that you remind me. That's cool, man. That's you. You mentioned the like the professional wrestling. Did you did you see uh, where Chris Jericho tweeted that thing the other night? I heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think about? For those who don't know, Chris Jericho tweeted that uh, that basically you know the UFC guys couldn't uh, do what him and uh, the rest of the pro wrestlers did. Basically, they couldn't I, hang in his world. I, I I wouldn't want to go and do what all the stuff they do, like all that the abuse on their body all the time and all the traveling and stuff like that. Yeah. But I, those guys would last on the jiu-jitsu mat with me either. So. Yeah, I don't think they want to get punched in the face for real. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather be known for for being good than being tough. You know, yeah, I, exactly. Those are super tough in that regard because they're taking constant pounding on their body and injuries and and everything else. Like I, I wouldn't want to be involved in all that crap. You know, saying this, what I wouldn't want to do, I wouldn't want to work for Vince McMahon. When I feel yeah, about right, it. fired. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really tell how much of that's an act, though. That's that's just all theater. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I watched Bret Hart's documentary, and that motherfucker hated Vince McMahon <laughs> by the time he yeah. ended up in his career. A lot of so, people don't like their bosses, but speaking of bosses, what's uh, what's Dana like? Dana is awesome. I, uh, you know, there are going to be some people that don't like him, and you know, everyone's going to have you know people that you know hate and things like that. But every experience I've ever had with Dana has been awesome. You know, I don't know if it's because you know I'm from Boston. I don't know if he's you know he's from Boston too. I don't know if it's that. But, like, every single interaction I've ever had with Dana was has been amazing. You know, he's always so, gone out of his way. He's always been real cool to me. So, Joe, tough question. Your last couple of fights, you've been getting, like, I might get this wrong, knockout of the night, fight of the night, sub of the yep. night. Like, you've been getting those bonuses, like, wild. Yep. Do you think it helps to be on Dana's good side for that sort of thing? Um, It, it helps. I mean, it certainly doesn't hurt. Um, You know, but, I mean, I've gotten, I think I've, I've gotten six or seven of them. Out of like nine fights, I think. Um, yeah, you know, so I, I think crazy. I'm tied for the record in them. Um, you know, but I, I think honestly, it's more so because of how I fight. Like I, I go out there trying to rip your arm off or cave your head in every single time. You know, and I go push as hard as I can for as long as I can, and, and that's why I, I, I get tired sometimes. I guess out, but um, you know, I'm going out there to finish you and, and to hurt you as fast as I can. And and that's what they want. You know, they don't want to see wrestlers that go out there and, and just you know eke out a decision. You know, uh, you know, I, I think that's the big thing. You know, it's like I go out there, like I set my hair on fire, and the only way to put it out is by beating the guy. <laughs> yeah, so I, Evan Tanner had this this quote. He said that um, when you're an amateur, the most important thing is just to win, right? Get a win, it doesn't matter. You know, like you talked about, that guy that uses exhaustion as a weapon. Yep. As an amateur, that's cool. But as a pro, the show is almost as important as the record. What do you think of oh. that? Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? Like. You could take a guy like uh, like John Fitch. He's got a great record in the UFC. Um, you know, he's arguably one of the, the best welterweights in the division, no question. You know, it, it took him a long time to get to St. Pierre. You know, it's like he should have gotten there quicker. But, you know, when, when you have guys go out and, and they, they decision a lot of people, that's not going to do it. 
You know what I mean? You got to go out there and you got to be exciting. You know, and they'll tell you that. You know, we we want you to win fights, but we want to you know we want to put on good fights. We don't want to see you go out there. You know, and Anderson Silva's done that. He's gone out there and just completely outclassed people and made them look stupid. And it's been horrible, horrible fights because he's not doing a lot. You know, he's not enough to win. He's just he's doing just enough to win and not enough to entertain. Yeah, it seems like when you're at the, when you're that much better than your opponent, then you can just you don't even really even have to hit him. You can just dance around him and make him look stupid for. Yep, he fought. Uh, he fought Holly's late, and the fight was like that. He fought Damian Maya, and he did that. And basically, he wanted to prove that he was better, which he did. And the fights went so long; it was like you're watching him just kind of dance around a guy that's clearly better. And he, he's doing just enough to just like almost like agony and torture of, of letting the match go on instead of trying to put you away. Speaking of Anderson Silva, man, so this guy fought at 205, and yep. he, he didn't seem to be giving. For people that don't know, Anderson Silva is uh, it's, there's kind of two fighters on the planet who trade this best pound for pound guy, and he's one of them. You know, GSP being the other, and um, uh, oh my train of thought. Oh, oh, so he fought at 205 when he normally fights at 185. Yep. And he didn't seem to be giving up any strength at all. Now they want to do a catch weight between him and GSP. GSP fights at 170. What's going to go, like, how is this guy who's easily strong enough to, to roll with most 205ers, what's he going to do against GSP? How is this going to be a reasonable fight? What, what I, I think, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's going to be tough for Anderson to get down. You know, I, I, I don't know how tough of a cut he has to 85, but I know that, like, in between fights, like, he'll blow up to, like, 220. You know, two two twenty, you know, or so. Which, you know, so. What's the catch weight? Do you know? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if they, they. I don't think they've even talked about it yet. You know, if they were gonna find a catch weight, they'd probably find like one eighty or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think oh. that. I don't. I don't know how low he's gonna get. But it's gonna be tough. Eighty. That, that's like you, hardly a cut. Well, I mean, one eighty five is his normal weight. One eighty five pounds. Five pounds is like cutting off your fingers or something. When you, if you're like really cutting hard, if he's cutting hard to make eighty five as is, he's not gonna be able to cut a whole lot more. Do they weigh GSP before or after he covers himself with Vaseline? <laughs> <laughs> Be skate? Because it it really will make a big difference because he puts a lot of it on, at least three jars. There's all kinds of things people can do for grease. It, it's so like uh, people are putting up like animated gifs of of Anderson. Uh, you know, rubbing the oil off his, off the Vaseline off his face, and then rubbing it on his chest and things like that. I've heard st- stories about guys like taking baths and like baby lotion like the night before. <laughs> it was like there's so the many before, like five minutes before that guy's glowing <laughs> in the ring. There's, you there's mentioned a- Anderson with the with the Vaseline. Did you mean GSP or Anderson? I think I think on Anderson on the on the last one I, I saw. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's people trolling more than anything, but you see him touch his face and you see him touch his chest. It's like. You know what is going on? You know it's like it was probably nothing, but you know people are always looking for something. You know. So do you hang out on Share Dog or is that just like? I hate Share Dog. No, I, I shouldn't say I hate Share. I hate the the Share Dog forum. I like ShareDog.com, uh-huh. uh, which is like the news site. I, I, I like Share Dog for that stuff. I hate the forum though. I, well, the the site that I love is MixedMartialArts.com. They uh mm-hmm. they have an awesome forum. They probably have the most guys. Um, they post on the Dana like the UFC reads MixedMartialArts.com every day. Um, you know, Dane is on MixedMartialArts.com all the time. Shane Carwin's posted on there all the time. I, I, I used to post on there a ton. I don't post as much anymore, but I'm always reading. Like, there's a there's a bunch of very legitimate people that, that post there a lot because they keep a better rein on, on the, the other posters. You know, like, they don't just have people just attacking fighters so much. Like, they're good about, you know, making sure, you know, there's not a mob on fighters and things like that. Like, they, they do a pretty good job. I, I got a question. So yeah. Have you, you ever run into some like some armchair uh, Mr. Miyagi's? Um, yeah, I mean it, it happens a little bit. Usually, it's people just trying to be helpful. They're like, oh, you know, well, I I did this or I did that, and I can help you out, or you know what I mean. It's it, it's usually not people being you know disrespectful, but there's always people trying to you know help out and show you things and, and all that kind of stuff. All right, man, I got a question. All so right, so you're standing in line at the movie theater, right? Yep. The, the line is all men, but just normal men, right? Like people at the movie theater. Summer twenty two. Some are 48. How yep. many normal people can you beat up at one time? Normal people? I don't know. Like, five-year-olds, I, I could beat up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you're headed with this. You sound like you've been watching my videos. <laughs> <laughs> are we talking one after an- another? Or are we talking... No, we're, t- when just, we're talking, like, the, no, in the, the scene from Matrix mom. 2, when, like, they just bomb it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, when you got two, right? I mean, you can I hear. You're striking shots. alone. 
if I pick my shots and I kind of ran around and I could pick off the weak ones, I could maybe get like maybe three or four. It's so tough because you know, with, with, punching is a terrible way to fight because you break your hand, you you get messed up, all this other stuff. And jujitsu is is good for one on one. It's really not good for a mob. You just get stomped to death. Right. Uh, I don't know. Probably, it's not as if you can't strike. It's not as if you're not throwing punches every day in the gym. No, 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 no I can, but I mean, I'm, I'm wearing hand wraps and I'm wearing boxing gloves and things like that. You know, your hand is not made for smashing things. It's made for grappling. Right, how about, how about yeah, I think it's better. How, how many old guys are in this line? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just that's that's part of your, your normal movie theater line makeup, right? Like, you know, you're going to have some. I'm going to so call could, them all of fighting age, right? Let's make well, them 17. Can I kick down the guy in the wheelchair to cutting the tickets? Does he, does he count? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You know, I don't know that the wheelchair guy should be your first target. I think you should take out a guy who's going to bring some offensive trouble. Yeah. Oh, I'm, what you guys high. know, you want to use the wheelchair guy as like a weapon. Like, if you can get him up to speed and just go ramming speed ahead, you could take out a couple guys, bash knee, kneecaps in, shins, whatever. You want to go after the biggest, toughest, affliction-wearing tattoo D-bag in the entire world. <laughs> Make a statement, you know. Try to destroy some morale, maybe get a yeah. couple people hesitant. I'm, yeah. see, I'm going the other way. You want to grab the smallest guy first. You may be able to use him as a weapon. Yeah, right. but see, I, I think that you're going to get other guys that normally wouldn't get involved as quick, and that they see you hitting a kid, they're going to be like, "Oh, that's wrong," and then they're going to come after you. Yeah, but they're going to they're going to be thinking to themselves, "I don't want him to hit me with that kid." Yeah. <laughs> if you hold him by the feet, little kid. Got, yeah, like a, like what is that um, that medieval thing where you've got the chain with the ball on the end? A mace. A mace. Or something? Is that yeah, called a mace? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So as you think that's about a flail it, flail with the chain. A flail with a chain? All right, well, well, hear me out here. The body of, like, a six-year-old is kind of like a flail with the uh -huh. chain, right? I mean, you got the, the sort of heavy item on the end, his skull, and then, <laughs> like, a, a flexible little body, his spinal cord. Kind of. I, I, get, I got kids that train at my gym, and, it, it like, they would absolutely overtake me. Like, we got, like, like, maybe, like, 10 or 15 of my little kids that are probably, like, six to eight. They would absolutely get the best of me. <laughs> Like really? if, if, if they were fearless, if they were fearless, they would, they would get me. How See, many of them did you take us many times? How many, how many five-year-olds? Yeah. Wow. I mean, look, it's gotta be a bigger number than four, three or four. Yeah. I'm pretty good for yeah, eight. No, I have five-year-olds. I don't know. I think 30 or 40. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, 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 all right. All right. I'm about, I'm about six, one, 185 pounds. I'm in decent shape. I work out maybe one day a week. I'm pretty sure I can take nine to ten five-year-olds, okay? Because I figure I drop, I, I like just like, you know, just you kick one the first half of them, right? Yeah, I'm gonna kick, I'm gonna kick at least one right in the chest, and he's gonna be down for the count, and he's falling into another one who's gonna be slowed down considerably, and then I just start running, and that way the fast ones are nearest to me, but the the slow fat kids are way in the back, so I can beat up on the fast ones and then work my way back to them. Yeah, you know, and then I think that once the kids, they catch up to you, they're going to grab onto your legs. Like That's what you don't want to happen. Them. Well, yeah, you're going to avoid it for as long as you can, but I think once they grab you, I think yeah, that's going to give you a strong foundation. Then you just pick at all the other ones that are trying to get in. <laughs> I don't think, no, so you're going to use their you're going to use their leg grabbing as, like, your base, and yes. then just start working the punches. Yep. No, see, I, I think we're missing it. You're missing out on a crucial part of this. Like, 10 five-year-olds weigh, what, 500? How much is a five-year weigh? Well, maybe uh, eighty pounds. Eighty pounds, no, sixty pounds. That's that's probably 60 a lot. Pounds. Yeah, no, sixty no. pounds. Maybe in America. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about six, seven hundred pounds of people on you all of a sudden. That's a lot of weight. That's like that reverend guy that, that hates wings so much. Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> 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 It's gonna feel like the blob is on you. No, if, the, if, if, and, and plus, I make cool. a statement. I got no problem with Reverend Burns. I know we're just joking, Reverend Burns. But then no, they're gonna go for your balls. They're gonna be biting, clawing, scratching. I don't want those things anywhere near me. I want to keep my distance. Deal with them one at a time. If, if I'm fighting five year olds, I'm wearing a cup and I'm getting gloves. I'm wrapping my hands <laughs> and I knock these little shits out. What kind of gloves right. do you think? Would you go with the like the five ounce gloves, or do you want the sixteen ounce boxing gloves? Um, no, I want, I want my MMA gloves so I can grab. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, right. Maybe you can sling some, sling some five-year-olds around. All right. So you uh, think oh, you could oh, take oh. Akibono? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. For people oh. to know, that's a sumo wrestler, and he went up yep. against Hoist Gracie, and uh, Gracie used his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu against him and got the win. I, some sort of weird thing. What do you get, like a finger lock or something? Um, I think a Gogoplata, or Omoplata. Gogoplata. Is that what it was? I think so. That sounds like a bad guy from a Mario's game. 
It should be. <laughs> hey, man, uh, steroids. You know, UFC fighters getting busted for steroids. Do you think they're more widespread than the guys getting caught? You think? Um, I'd say there are definitely guys that are using that aren't getting caught here and there. You know, because they don't, they don't test every fighter every single time. They'll yeah. test, like, all the title fights. They'll test the main event, which a lot of times is, you know, the title fight. And then they'll do a couple fights that are random. You know, like, I, I, I've heard of, you know, guys, you know, hearing that, you know, they were going to test every single fighter on the card. I've heard of guys, like, saying they got hurt or they pull out or things like that, you know. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm sure there are other guys that are using, but I don't think it's as, as crazy as some people think. You know, I think that... <laughs> You can tell by their body type. Like some guys are just perfect specimens. Yeah, you know, sometimes those guys, the guys that juice, sometimes it's just really good genetics. Like I've seen some guys that you know that never freaking touch a weight, and they are jacked. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. There's guys that that don't like weight train. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, just in in general, like whether it's a oh, okay. or, or guys or whatever, you know, pretty much everybody oh, okay. sees gonna you know do weights and stuff like that. But I've had guys that you know, like the strongest guy in my entire gym is my size. Doesn't lift weights at all. He's a freaking, he's a trash man. He's, he's dumping big ass barrels of trash all day long. And that guy grabs you and he can't move. And he's like my size. He's unbelievably strong, you know, and, and he looks ripped, but never touches weights. You know what I mean? So uh -huh. you never know. Reminds me of Greg McDonald where I used to work at. Yeah, I've seen you, that. Got a lot of, you see that a lot. Like guys who work in, um, who do work that's like heavily, heavy manual work, like uh, brick masons and, uh, people who are working in plants, moving boxes and stuff, and those guys end up being, just because of the weird movements that they have to make, the awkward yep. movements with that much weight, it's, it's you can't get that with, I mean, I guess you could get it with weight training, but you wouldn't want to. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So you never know. I don't know. I remember Greg could hold me down with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you yeah. figure out what you're doing for Valentine's Day yet? I have no idea. I, I should figure that out. I'm, uh, I'm actually... I got to drive to New Jersey tomorrow morning. Uh, one of my guys is fighting on the Strike Force undercard, the, the Fedor fight. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be gone from tomorrow morning at like 6 until Sunday night. And then my girlfriend's going to be here. And then Monday's Valentine's Day. So I, I, I should probably figure out something pretty quick. So you'll be there at the Fedor fight. You'll be ringside? Uh, I, I won't be ringside. I'll be in the back room. My guy's like, he's one of the first fights. It's like the I got you. undercard. And then, uh, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be there for the fight after though. I'll be there watching. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah it, I, I don't know. Maybe I should be paying more respect, but I haven't seen Fedor fight elite talent in a while. And the elite talent he faced kind of got exposed when they hit the UFC guys like Pro Cop. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, I don't think that, you know, Fedor would do that good in the cage. Like, I, I think part of the reason why he lost his last fight was because of the cage. You know, I think that he was he was in the triangle. He tried to, you know, kind of throw the lights to the side, and he kind of ran into the fence a little bit. Um, you know, it's kind of intimidating, you know, being in a cage versus a ring. It's a, it's a very different experience, um, you know, and it, and it is different. You know, it's so much different. If I have my guys fighting in a, a ring or a cage, we have to completely, you know, game plan differently based on where it is, you know. And, and yeah, I mean, I don't, think he, I don't think he was exposed necessarily, but he definitely doesn't have the intimidation factor that he had before, which is a huge advantage. I got a couple questions here. All right. All right you're in a, you got a guy on submission hold. Is there any part in the back of your mind where you don't want to hurt him? Like um, you ever hold back? He, he kind of, yes and no. I mean, in a fight, I'm not I'm not thinking about it too much. Like if I, if I have like very good control over him and there's no way he's getting away, I'm not going to crank it to be a jerk. Um, you know, like I'll, I'll, I know the range of motion, um, you know, where he is comfortable, where he's uncomfortable and he's going to tap, and then where I'm destroying his arm. You know, I, I, I understand the differences. So I'm not going to just destroy someone's arm just because I have it. But I'll, I'll, I'll give him, like, half a second at the comfort, at the uncomfortable range and then hips to the sky and I'm, I'm, I'm sending him. Yeah, it. there's a difference between winning a fight and, like, messing somebody up for a year. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right, All right I got Joe. another question. Um, Go ahead, Wings. Um, has ego ever bothered you while you're, while, you're in a, while you're preparing for a fight? Like, has, like you have crossed your mind or whatever? Like, just, you know, pride and stuff? Um, a, a little bit. I mean, like, the main thing, you got to be careful you don't get hurt in training. Um, you know, so, I mean, your ego and, and pride and all that stuff can be, you know, tough. But, like, fighting in general is a very, very tough sport because even if the other guy's better, you have to be mentally prepared and, and ready to, A, get your ass kicked and keep on fighting. But more importantly, you have to go into the fight thinking that you are going to destroy this guy and there's nothing he can do and that you are just the better fighter and you're going to destroy him. You know, and you have to go with that mindset, but 
if things get rocky and you start to lose, you've got to be ready to push on to it. It's, it, it's way tougher than people think. The, the psycho psychological aspect of it is huge. Hmm. All right, all right. So you're, what's a day in the life of Joe like, right? How much are you training? What, what are you doing on a normal day? Uh, right now, I lift three days in the morning. So, like, I'll get up at – I'm up at 5.30 in the morning, and I leave my house at 6. I drive, like, an hour to go and lift because it's a really good place. Uh, Mike Boyle Strength Initiative, which is, like – it's a very, very good place, but it, it's not very close. But I, I think it's worth the drive, so I drive there. And I, I lift from like 7 to 8.30, drive home. I'm home by like 9.30, 10 o'clock. Basically eat, hang out for like an hour or so, go to the gym at 12, teach like a grappling class or something. Um, then I'll, I'll box later in the afternoon, and then I'll do all my MMA stuff. So I'm probably – I work out from, you know – Anywhere from six to eight hours most days. Wow! And then, so we, and then, for all my other time, I'm, I'm on Xbox playing. Call which of games you play? <laughs> Call of Duty mostly. Mostly Call of Duty. You know, I, I got I um I, I was way behind on all the first person shooters. Like I, I got in when I had uh, ACL surgery. Um, you know, I was basically I was laid up in bed and I, I couldn't do anything. So I was playing uh, World at War, but I was way behind. Like I was awful. And then from there, I, I went back to, to regular Modern War, uh, regular uh, COD Four, and then I got Modern Warfare, and that was like the first one that I got like when it was new, and uh, and I still I was still playing catch up, you know, like all my friends have been playing since you know like Halo Three, and you know they get tons and tons of experience. You know, and I played on the computer a little bit like Counter Strike and things like that in college, but not never seriously. It'd be like you know screw around here and there, um, you know. So I basically I stick the first person shooters. I played like Gears of War. Um, I like Transformers just because it's badass because it's Transformers. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, mainly, you know, mainly Call of Duty, though. You know, a little bit of Transformers, a little bit of Left 4 Dead, a um, little bit of Gears of War, a little bit of Ghostbusters. That's about it. Oh, Ghostbusters is awesome. Ghostbusters is awesome. <laughs> I, I can't play it for very long, but it's definitely awesome. I just like yeah. it because it's got some of the actors' voices in it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. I thought they were supposed to do a Ghostbusters 3 here in a minute. They were talking. I think I think that someone put the hold on it. it might have been Bill Murray actually. Bill Murray's hmm. bitch. Well, Bill Murray needs to hurry up. He's getting old. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. hardly looks like Bill Murray anymore. How did we get you on the podcast, man? Everyone wants to know how we landed Joe Lozon. Um, I, I, someone put up a. I don't know if I I, I read I, I I'd known about Painkiller already for a while. I'd seen YouTube things, but like I really don't listen to that many podcasts. You know, and the time was kind of bad because like normally like one of those days that I'm up early is Friday. So if I'm up at 5.30, I'm usually, by the time I get, I just got back to the gym. I just barely made it on here. By the time I get back from the gym, shower, eat, I'm, I'm, it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to bed. And, uh, you know, but I started listening one day and I, then I, just, I couldn't turn it off. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I listen. I think I listened like two weeks. I listened one week. I didn't say anything at all. And then you start, and then we were posting on Reddit like right after. And then we're going back and forth. So then I, I was paying t attention a little bit more. And I don't know. I do all kinds of radio shows and, and things like that, so it's definitely awesome doing a Call of Duty one. Yeah, game. so people that that follow me know that I'm I'm kind of like a Reddit aholic. You know, I go there and I spend it's... time on it every day. And uh, just oh, when you're see what... never no, when you're no 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 no, yeah. no 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 yeah never um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> like Joe replied to me. It was like JoeLozon.com was the guy's like Reddit handle. I was like, no way, this is Joe. And then I asked him. Um, uh, if we were to get into a fight, do you think that I could last 15 seconds no striking? And do you remember what you said? Uh, I think I said I would give you give it to you out of respect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'll allow you to last 15 seconds in a fight with me. I was like, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. And then, like, so we went back and forth and read it. And then um, last week on the podcast, you were active in the stream. And yep. we asked you to join. And, and then, yeah, Joe Lozon, man. So when can we expect this fight? Uh, oh, between uh, Joe and I? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't even outrun him. Don't tell him. <laughs> yes, he's in the air. He's gonna be. He, he just said he won't break your arm. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I, said, said, he's not I would go. I, I roll with Joe. I'd see how long I could last. I'd let you. I'd film it and put it on my channel. I wonder. Yep. Awesome. I might take the fifteen second challenge. <laughs> he'd be like, he'd be like, go! Woody turns around, runs, starts climbing up the 
<laughs> jumping off the walls. He's going to take like, seconds eight, that case. Nine, ten. What he's like trying to go higher. Joe's got him by the ankles. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking. Fifteen seconds. Like it. If I could stop him from grabbing my head, it seems like it would take a couple seconds to mo hit most of <laughs> Like, is he going to hit a flying armbar on me or something? I, like, I got I, I got a lot of good teams. I got flying arm locks, flying triangles. Uh, flying my elbows in and try not to let you grab my head. I got 15 what, seconds. What, your strategy has to be the same as when you're attacked by a bear. You want to roll with him? <laughs> play dead. All he can do then is kick you a little. There was a, there was a, there was a guy. This is probably like six years ago, seven years ago now. So I hadn't been training that long, like only three years probably. And um, we were at a local fight, and there was a guy that was flown in from Arizona. And, you know, he's supposed to, you know, be one of the, the – he's supposed to be the main event, and then something happened, like his opponent missed weight or, or something, you know. So we were just all kind of hanging out. You know, I was there early, and um, my friend was, was talking to this other guy. His name was Ray. And uh, I was like, Ray, I'm, you know, and Ray was talking, you know, just kind of like talking out of his ass a little bit. And, um, you know, and Rick's like – Ray, he he could beat you in a minute, and Ray's like, oh, no way, no way, like he could tap you out in a minute, and Ray's like, no way. So we jumped in the in the ring, you know, before the, the place is empty, there's no one there, and <laughs> we, I, I told him, and then to add insult to injury, I'm like, whatever submission you want, you you name it. So he named it. He said an arm lock, and then I flat arm locked him in like 20 seconds, and he, he just <laughs> cried. So was that guy a fighter at all? Like I did professional fighter, flown in from Arizona. Yeah. Huh. Yep. He didn't keep his elbows in. This bring this brings the question: Have you ever seen a fluke, like somebody just straight up mess up in a fight where they should have won? Oh yeah, I mean it, it happens. You know, I, I've been tapped out by guys at my gym that are you know like beginners. And I mean it's like we get this. I get this kid, one kid at my gym. Well, I'm never gonna hear the end of this. This kid, uh, <laughs> Brendan. Who, uh, you know, he, he's a good wrestler. You know, wrestles at uh, you know one of the the, the town uh, high schools around us, and uh, he's like six two, probably like hundred and sixty pounds, and uh, you know like, he's going for a choke on me, and like I thought I was safe, and I kind of didn't give the choke any respect, and uh, I tried to get out of it, and it's kind of like got to the point where like he tightened it up and tightened it up, and it got to the point where like I couldn't get out of it, and he tapped me, you know, and he's been training with us, you know, not long, maybe a year and a half, two years, something like that, but he caught me, you know, it definitely happens. So now you're his pickup line. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever like when so when I when I was training, if a guy came in and, and sometimes wrestlers would do this, they'd be like super aggressive and put like, you know, just like, kind of beyond the etiquette of what was going on. The yep. instructor would go run up against him and usually like he'd just do takedown drills on him, slam the guy on his back repeatedly and, until he sort of settled down. Yeah. Do you ever we... do that? Like corporal punishment? Always. Yeah, we have <laughs> <laughs> our big thing, like the, the big theme for my school is we do knee on chest. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, if, if you're psychotro, you just you, you pop up to knee on chest and you grab, you know, under their leg, you grab under their neck, and you just freaking, like, look them dead in the eye and you just grind your knee into their chest until they can't move. And it's like, it just kind of lets them know, like, I can murder you right now and there's nothing you can do to stop it. And, like, when I was, like, I was, like, I was pretty talented at jujitsu and stuff, like, right off the bat. So I was, like, 150 pounds soaking wet when I started. And I would do that to guys. Like, I would be the guy, like, you know, my, my, my trainer, Joe Parker, like, hey, Joe. Go uh go roll with this guy. Give him the give him the special treatment, and I would just <laughs> and like and, and they're like usually like you know they could be like a marine or, or some big juice head or whatever, and then, then they're getting tormented and tortured by this kid that's 150 pounds. That, you and, know. and you do that because they misbehave, right? Like because they you know this this juice head or marine you know found himself oh. uh, better than some guys, so they bring in you. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of times, just they just don't know. You know, they just they're being rough. You know what I mean? And like you just and, put them in their place, let them know what's yeah. what. Yeah, like, you know, because we'll roll with them and, and, you know, we don't crush them. You know what I mean? Like, we'll, we'll beat them, but we're not, you know, we're not, like, hurting them too much. You know, it's, it's like you make them uncomfortable, but you don't, you know, go out of your way to, to be a jerk. Um, but if, if they're being rough and they're not giving that same, you know, courtesy to others, then they get it the worst of anyone. You know, they'll get, you know, choked and you hold the choke a little bit long and all <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a question. Uh, you got a lot of fight experience. Have you ever been told how to defend against a knife? Um, usually, if they have a knife, you're getting cut. Um, I mean, the 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 core concept for jujitsu is is two on one. You know what I mean? So you would try to use both your hands to control the the, the the knife as best as possible. But for the most part, I mean, there are guys like mostly crazy guys that are out there that will you know try to do knife fighting and all that kind of stuff. But 
I'll see if the other guy's got a knife, you're getting cut. You know, you might not get cut super bad, but you're definitely getting cut. Yeah, I've seen that simulation where, like, you give the one guy a Sharpie and you try to go against him without him marking on your white shirt. And it's yeah. fucking impossible. Like, like yeah. think about that. You're definitely getting cut, you know. Um, you know, but you better hope that guy doesn't, you, you know, that, that guy better hope you don't take the knife away from him. Oh, yeah. Cause, yeah, it's going to go really bad then. Do you yeah. think there's many guys who aren't pro fighters who could hang with pro fighters? Like, are there, are there lots of guys who just train, maybe they're Navy SEALs or something, who could who could survive in the ring or in the cage? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some. I don't I think necessarily Navy SEALs as much. Uh, I'm yeah. sure there are some. You know, like, those guys are, are, are so different, though. I mean, those guys, you know, they're taking some kind of, you know, pill when they wake up in the morning to get them going, and they're taking something to put them to bed, you know, to sleep. It's like, those guys are on, Yeah, you know, they're on speed, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? And, you know, I'm sure there's some guys, like, I'm, I'm sure there's, you know, at this point, there's all kinds of Navy SEALs that are, you know, brown belts and black belts in jiu-jitsu. You know, yeah, they're sure. hang, or pro boxers or, or whatever. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely guys out there. There's some guys that are MMA fighters that do great in the gym, and they do they fall apart and do terrible when it comes time in front of them. All right, I got a question. Do you think you could take Shaq? <laughs> yeah. Shaq, the basketball Shaq, player. Shaq's an MMA fan. And he's, he's with the Boston Celtics now. Uh, probably not. He's guy's kind of enormous. You know, no? I was wondering, just a guy that's way bigger than you. He's like, whoa. Shaq, I just imagine Shaq. You're going to need some of this icy hot when I'm done with you, boy. I think he's submission or something, but like. Uh, he, he was front row uh, two fights ago. Uh, the UFC came to Boston, so I got to fight on that card. And uh, I was my, my coach was standing on like the, the raised barrier or on the outside edge, and Shaq stood up in, in the front row and put his arms up, and he was taller than my coach, who was like four feet off the ground. It's like he's ridiculous. Just, just too big. Hey, who's the best pound for pound fighter? Um, I think Saint Pierre. I really, think. that's my pick too. But I thought it was the unpopular one. No, I mean, I, I think that St. Pierre, like, I always say that I think the most important aspect of a fight is wrestling. Because if, say, what do you say we fight and I have the better boxing? Well, I need to have the better wrestling, too, because you might have better jiu-jitsu than me. So I need to have the better wrestling to keep it up. And vice versa, if you had the better wrestling, then you would take the fight to the ground and then you would beat me there. So unless you're way better on the ground and way better on your feet, wrestling is the most important thing. You know, like, everyone keeps talking about this Anderson Silva St. Pierre fight. I think that even though he's the, the smaller guy, I think St. Pierre still wins that because mm -hmm. his wrestling is so much better. I he think that down Koscheck at will, no? Yep, pretty much. Yeah, and, and he, he completely stuffed all of Koscheck's takedowns, which were super impressive. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, for I, people that don't know, Koscheck was an elite level college wrestler, which usually means that that guy has the takedown advantage. You know, and not only are they great at takedowns, but they're great at stuffing your takedowns. And uh, GSP, who wasn't, as far as I know, like the celebrated wrestler in his younger days, has become one of the best in the world. Yeah, like he never wrestled. I don't think he ever wrestled. Wrestling. It was all after when he was fighting. Talk about, talk about wrestling. What, what about Brock Lesnar? He, he had a pretty big wrestling background. Yeah, Lesnar was a, a D1 wrestler. You know, he was a beast wrestler, you know. Uh, Kane was a better wrestler, you know. And I, I think that was why Kane won the fight, Kane Velasquez, you know. He Kane also had the bands. Space in too, though, right? Oh yeah, he <laughs> messed up. Bad. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So here's a question. So now that you're, uh, you know, you're Joe Lozon, you're famous, etc. Do old high school friends like treat you different? Do they have their hand out? Do they try to get things from you? Um, you it, it's it's kind of weird. Like, like I was super quiet when I was in high school. Like I didn't hang out with. Like I had a couple friends that I hung out with all the time. But, like, I wasn't super outgoing. Like, I never went to prom. I never went to – I went to graduation, but that was it. I never went to any dances. Like, I never did anything. Like, I was I was pretty antisocial in high school. So, like, I'll see people out, and I have no problem. Like, I'll go and I'll talk to whoever. You know what I mean? Like, I was, I was pretty – I wasn't outgoing, but I was friendly with whoever. Um, you know, it, it's kind of – it's weird because, like, some people that, like, that I was good friends with, they, like, feel bad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, almost, like, even, like, talking to me, like, they're bothering me or something. And I love to hear from those guys. But, you know, then there's other guys, like, I'll see out, like, we'll be at a restaurant or a bar or something like that, and they'll, like, you know, they'll come over, and they'll want me to go over and say hi to their friends. Like, oh, yeah, you know, me and Joe were, like, we were boys in high school. It's like, dude, I don't think I ever talked to you before today. <laughs> like, I'm not a fan of those kids. Like, I don't, I'll, I'll go and say hi. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not being, like, a snob like that. But don't try and impress all your friends about how we were best friends in high school when we weren't. You know what I mean? Like, there are a lot of kids, and they know who they are, that, like, I hang out with that I was friendly with, things like that. You know, but if I've never, ever, ever seen you outside of school, 
don't go and act like we were best friends, you know, and, and it, it's kind of, it's awkward, but I, I, I still, you know, do whatever, you know, I'll say hi, I'll do whatever. Yeah, I'm SOL in that department. All my friends got too many damn kids now. Yeah. <laughs> friend is starting to pop out kids too. <laughs> uh, do you get brothers and sisters? I have two brothers. Yep. Uh, Danny's, uh, Danny's my youngest brother. Uh, he's actually the youngest UFC fighter ever. He, uh, you know, he trains. My brother Stephen has nothing to do with fighting. He just does his own thing. Does the family dynamic revolve like the fact that you're, you know, famous and on, on pay per view and such? Does that like change things? It, um, not really. I mean, it, it's it, it's a little bit. No, I, it's it's pretty much you know the same as always. You know, what I mean, it's it's not a big deal. You know, like honestly, I don't even I don't even. I'm not gonna say I'm not famous at all, but it's like you're talking like F level celebrity right there. You know what I mean? It's like very small number of people know, you know, who it is compared to, you know what I mean, like a Tom Brady and a Shaq and all that kind of stuff. It's not yeah, even I mean, it's Russia. If you get if you get recognized yes, out in public, you're you're some form of celebrity. Yeah, yeah. you know, and that does happen. That happens. Like, pretty much if I go anywhere, like if I ever go out like I go out to dinner or something like that, it's not like there's mobs of people, but someone will always come over and say hi. You know what I mean? It, it happens yeah. pretty much every time I go out. But it's not like sure. It's not an inconvenience. It's not annoying. It's not, you know, it's not, you know, like paparazzi level or any of that crap. Yeah. Is, Do you ever get so, somebody coming up to you wanting to fight you? Has that ever happened? Uh, no. Nope. You know, usually everyone's pretty cool. But like I, I said, I'm, I'm real good at diffusing situations. If someone was, you know what I mean? You know, I, I'm, I'm real good. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm like, oh, dude, you would kick my ass. You know, like, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I play it you said you were in the, you said you were in backyard wrestling, right? Yep. Have you, have you ever had somebody get come to you to beat somebody else up? Um, during my youth? I did. I did. I, I actually, I didn't really do it. Uh, there was a kid that, uh, a guy that actually trains with us now, uh, Lee Bean. And uh, he was like, I'm, I'm from East Bridgewater, which is a different town than Bridgewater. And, and Lee Bean was like this heavyweight wrestler um, from Bridgewater. And uh, like for years, I was hearing about this kid, Lee Bean. Like there were other kids in my high school trying to get set up me to fight him. You know, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for a while. And, uh, you know, and I fought other kids like at parties and things like that where like I went specifically to fight so-and-so. And uh, they wanted me to fight this kid, Lee Bean, and I'd never met him. And then when I did, he almost, like, I was, we were training together, and he almost broke me in half. He's enormous. Like, I could never, like, that's why I say, like, you know, trying to fight Shaq. You know what I mean? It's like, you got a guy that's 300 pounds, and it's athletic. You know what I mean? You're in trouble when you're 150. Yeah, really? Shaq's so, arm's about as big as you. <laughs> yeah. I was expecting the, the story to end differently. So the Lee Bean of today still gets the Joe today. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, I, I, cause he's so big, you know, and he's never made fighter now. He's got, you know, uh, he's got a ton of wrestling experience. He wrestled at Brown, you know, had like a full scholarship there for, for wrestling and things like that. Like, so a, a ridiculous. And he's one of those like athletic fat kids. Like he's 260 pounds. He can walk on his hands upstairs and like, just like a monster athlete, you know? And, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I could, I could hope that I could land a Hail Mary punch and, and knock him out or something. But the reality of the matter is probably that he's throwing me through the fence. You ever hit some, you ever hit somebody with a hail mary punch and expected them to go down and they didn't? Um, yeah, I, I have. You know, like does that demoralize you or anything like that? Like um, it... a little bit. I mean, it is demoralizing a little bit. But if I hit someone with a hail mary punch, I know I can hit them with another one. You know, it's like it's usually like if if you're putting everything you have into a punch and you still landed, then you can do it again. Because I've always wondered. You see these things on the movies. You see these guys that can just take a punch and just look at you. I mean, is that really how it happens in some people? It, some people like that. Like when I've trained with BJ, I hit him with really freaking hard shots, and he just like smiles at me. Like it, it didn't bother him in the in the least bit. You know what I mean? So it definitely, you know, it, it's not a very good feeling. Have you ever rolled with Joe Rogan? I haven't. No, I haven't rolled with Rogan. No. no. Is he? Did he get a brown belt, or is he still purple? Um, he's at least a brown belt. He might even be a black belt soon. I don't know. Okay. R Rogan's nasty. Yeah, he, he's real good. Like I've seen like. I've talked to a lot of people who roll with him and train with him and things like that. And, like, you know, he, he did, like, um, he was always into, like, martial arts and things like that. He did, like, taekwondo and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he, he freaking lifts a lot. He's jacked. And he's, like, yeah. a brown. You know what I mean? Like, he, he trains, you know, consistently, like, you know, because he really, really likes it. You know, some guys train because they have to. Rogan trains because he likes it, you know. And, and, and that that's way scary. Joe Rogan, ain't that that guy from uh, the Fear man Factor. show? Yeah. No, from yeah, Fear Factor. Fact. show. Well, he was on the second cast of the Man Show, right? Not the first. Yeah, one. yeah. yeah and, and of course, he was the Fear Factor guy. He um he does the commentating for UFC, and he, he does it really well. He clearly knows what he's doing. And yeah. He's also a uh, active. He likes to train. He's into it. If, if, I don't it's know if you've a, ever seen him with a shirt off. The guy is jacked. Yeah, he's, he's enormous. 
the funniest thing I've ever seen out of Joe Rogan, uh, he was on the Howard Stern show one time, and they produced this stripper who pretended like she had a, a, a child by him. She was like, remember back spring break, two, 1999? And he's like, he's like, I was there in 1999. Oh, my God. And they had him going so well. It was awesome. It was, <laughs> but this chick had him convinced that, that, uh, that she was the mother of his, uh, his, his son that he never knew about. Dude, I have seen Joe Rogan against two guys, and they're both awesome. One was just a total hater, right? The guy, like, flamed him on the internet every day. MySpace uh, kid. <laughs> was he a MySpace kid? Yeah. And, and he really, like, I guess he got under his skin, and Joe invited him to come to his gym. And he just, like, you know, the kid wasn't a fighter. And, and I think, you know, he exhausted him and tapped him out a couple times until it was, like, this point's made. You know, this, what am I doing here? It's like beating up a little kid. And then there was another one. I think there was a comedian. And uh, Joe Rogan and this guy were, like, leaning up against the stage or something, talking. And the guy was, like, poking at Joe, you know, just being sort of verbally assaulted. And he's like, dude, I could choke you out right now. And the guy didn't take it seriously. He didn't, like, he didn't know that Joe was about to step into action. He's like, yeah, all right, go ahead, choke me out. And then he did. Like, <laughs> he just guillotined him. <laughs> he guillotined him. And, uh... Uh, he held it for like five seconds, like he didn't take him unconscious or anything. And the guy was like shocked, like, "Oh my gosh, you know, you really did that. That really hurt." And uh, he's like, "I <laughs> warned you, you know, you invited me. <laughs> that was it." So uh, yeah, don't push Joe's buttons because he'll he'll take action. Yeah, he definitely knows what he's doing. Yeah. Hey, what's your favorite class in Black Ops? Um, I like to uh, run the Galil with dual mags, sleight of hand. Um. And then from there, I switch it up. Like I, I think right now I'm running Ninja, and I feel my friend Hardline Pro. Are you prestiging? Um, I was kidding about Ninja. I meant, uh, yeah, no, I, um, no, I don't prestige. No. Are you zero or one, or where are you? Uh, zero. No, I, yeah. I prestige on Modern Warfare too, and I wanted to shoot myself immediately. It's, it's, <laughs> Black Ops wasn't as bad because you can just, you know, you can generally unlock and buy what you want, you know, pretty quick. But I just don't see any any reason for it. I have five classes that, you know what I mean, that I, I can change up based on the game type. And, you know, I'm, I'm not that worried about it. I, I don't need to have six classes or ten classes or whatever. I'm with you, man. I, I prestiged once because it's a free class, right, the first prestige. Yep. And then after that, I started earning my pro perks, and they were yep. so miserable to get. I yep. suicided so many times, and uh, <laughs> you know, no more. I'm not going to do it again. I, I did the same so, thing. I unlocked I unlocked every single pro perk, and even the ones that I, I will never, ever use. Like, I hate second chance, like, with a passion, you know, and it pained me to even get to unlock the pro version. But, you know, I unlocked them all, and I'm, I'm never prestiging, never. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm about 40,000 off gold guns. Oh, nice. 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 Yeah. But I prestige 17 times already. <laughs> oh, because you crossed the two platforms. Yeah. yeah both platforms. That's your See, team. Wings, for the next COD game, you've got to get on PC and be the only person who's uh, max prestige on all three platforms. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sick. That would be sick, man. You know what I, I was thinking of doing? I think it'd be neat if I got the PC version and use my Xbox controller and just saw what I could do, you know, like post up a free for all, see the difference. Cause the, you, apparently you the PC well. guys are, uh, I think they have an aiming advantage by using them. They have an aiming advantage, but I've said this before, aiming is 10% of call of duty. Most of it, you got 20% that's mental and the other, the rest of it is all line of sight. Whoever sees who first wins. 70% of statistics are bullshit. Just saying. <laughs> oh, just saying. In the I, case I of Wings, you might want to bump that up a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We love you, Wings, man. Hey, I played a lot of Call of Duty. There's your people, man. Calm down. <laughs> and I, um, I have to say, aiming is the least considered my concern. Aiming is the last thing that happens. First off, you got to you got to figure out where they're at. That's that's mental. And that's, you know, scouting. You want to get a good line of sight, such as put yourself on a window behind a box. Something like that. Give yourself the advantage into the gunfight in case there's more than one. Then you aim. Generally, he doesn't even know you're there. So you, you get the first shot on him. And generally, first shot wins most of the time unless connection plays a huge role in it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I agree that the way you navigate the maps, the, you know, predicting your enemy is probably a bigger part than snapping on target. But snapping on target well is an advantage. It'd yeah, be something I think you'd give up. I'm just saying, if you went on PC, you wouldn't. You you probably wouldn't do as well, 
because you're at the disadvantage on that with versus mouse versus a controller. Mm-hmm. But you you wouldn't get blown out. You wouldn't be at the bottom of the list two and twenty four. No, yeah. I mean you got to keep in mind like, like you're pre- if if you're a top ten percent uh, console player, then you're probably a top thirty percent. PC player. Higher than that. I mean, PC players, good PC players are far, few and far between, just like console. Like, for every Sandy Rabbit you got on console, you got, you know, a, a hundred thousand ghost bitches. I passed Sandy and subs the other day. <laughs> You're passing everyone in subs, man. It, what's the ETA on when I get knocked down? Um, I think, like, less than, two weeks. Weeks. less than two weeks. Something like that, yeah. It's coming. You and Jaws are just storming through everybody. But I don't count you anymore, Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, it's totally fair. I even saw you comment on a video. Someone was like, um, uh, are you going to do any more gaming videos? And you're like, no. I picked up 65,000 subs in the last month, and none of them want to see me play video games. Which I think is, is the right move. I think that, <laughs> dude, the not to say that the COD community is uh, like a small little YouTube thing. It's actually one of the more successful little corners of YouTube. But there are much bigger fish out there, and those are the seas that Russia will. Yeah, I, and I mean, it's it's not just because of that I don't like playing video games as much as is necessary to run a YouTube channel as big as mine. I, like, like I, I would need to literally play three to four hours a day, like like no joke. Because I mean, I just yeah, more with my that, connection, with my footage. connection, <laughs> yeah, with my connection, I have a hard time getting getting a gameplay. So I'd have to play three to four hours a day just to get the gameplay, and then I, I'm just not doing that. Plus, to be honest, like this is kind of weird. I think I'm getting the early onsets of tendonitis in my left hand from gripping a fucking controller for 10 yeah, you, you haven't got carpal tunnel yet? You a newbie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I've had carpal tunnel since Diablo 2. So, yeah, Joe, are you, no are you about to shed a tear about these work-related injuries? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm gonna... <laughs> uh, like, Joe, Joe, like I was going to say it earlier, like Joe's talking about he gets on Call of Duty to blow off steam. Man, Call of Duty makes me want to punch somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Go join an MMA gym. I plan uh, to. I drop the weight. I know. Well, dude, it's the best way to drop weight. You gotta burn I'm, fat. I'm, right? I'm, I'm way too big right now, and also have a leg injury to, to deal with as well. I just want to learn how to defend myself, not do anything else. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm about. I want to say I'm under 400 pounds at this point because I've dropped a lot of weight in the last month. Dude, yeah, it, I wanted to talk about that. Definitely talking to that big. So, um. I hope none of this is too private. You were going to get financing for surgery. Yeah. Are you okay. Yeah. And uh, and that financing fell through. And it had nothing to do with wings. It had to do with the um, the doc that he was going to use no longer uh, was interested in that kind of financing. Like the, the the whole company that did the financing went under or something. Am I on target so far? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, so in now that the he was, lap band surgery, that's what it was going to be. So now that lap band surgery kind of fell through. Uh, you've done you done it, I guess, the old-fashioned way, right? You know, you changed your diet. Well, I, you, you, some I did it a little different this time. Like I've been on diets before, but this this is the first time I attempted a diet when I had like a fan base that could support you and all this right here. Like um, I, I I basically took donations and I got enough money to see a a, a dietitian right here in Myrtle Beach, um, Greg Norman, and basically he put me on these pills called let me I'm see if I'm saying this right, Fentermine. P h e n t e r m i n e. They're basically speed. Was what they are. That you can't sleep on them. You it's always have energy. It's fetamine. You always have energy. I get about two or three hours of sleep a day, and you never want to eat. It's the, it's pretty much the same thing to give the Navy SEALs. Um, and the pills are wonder drugs. I mean, literally. It's <laughs> you, they, they, you also get amino acids and protein pills just so my muscles don't deteriorate. Mm-hmm. And you know, I started. I started out slow. I started out doing Tybo for about 15 minutes a day, and then I I had like a 25 pound weight. I started doing a little bit of arm exercise, and I bought a bike yesterday, and I I did about a half hour on the bike to go along with everything else, and I've probably dropped 35 to 40 pounds in the first month. That's awesome. You should. Yeah. Uh, you ever try playing games while you're on the bike? Just I can't do it. I, I I got way too high standards, and I I just get mad. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about gaming so, standards, not workout standards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that went without saying. Um, so in retrospect, are you kind of happy the financing fell through and you went this route instead? Yeah, because I, I was actually didn't want the surgery. My mother was pushing me toward it because she didn't think I had the physical ability 
to lose weight because basically I have no willpower. <laughs> but um, these pills, these pills are what actually are helping me lose weight because as long as I don't think about eating, like unless I like seafood and like, oh, I want to eat that, I never think about eating. So I, I, I went two or three days in the last month where I forgot to eat. It's like, oh shit, what time is it? You know, you just forget to eat. I mean, your body has no craving to eat whatsoever. And the pills help a lot because at that point, eating becomes something that you have to do, like tying your shoes or putting on a shirt to go outside instead of something your body wants. That makes sense. Now, you, I mean, you, at this point, you could eat anything, right? I mean, you've made a choice to eat better food. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing with me is I needed a lifestyle change much more than just a diet. I, I, well, going on a diet and losing weight is great. And these pills are great, but eventually I'm going to wean myself off of these pills. Like, I don't want to be addicted to this shit, which costs $100 a bottle for the rest of my life. You know, eventually I got to get myself to a point where I have a scheduled meal in the morning, scheduled meal in the day, where I have, like, basically a schedule where I eat at because I have horrible genetics. Like, you talk about those guys that are trash can men or super strong meat. Yeah. I yep. eat sandwiches. I gain weight. That's what happens. Yeah, I don't have thyroid problems or nothing. I just I just have a really bad genetic line. Like I'm yep. balding, you know. <laughs> I, got, I got a fat gene. <laughs> <laughs> You're the opposite of Joe. That's <laughs> yeah. I, I I think I have super genetics. Like my dad's like my dad's fifty. Uh, like just started losing his hair just a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, was always like 175 pounds, got up to 200, and like dieted for like a month and started running and dropped all the weight, like nothing. Like, I, I definitely got lucky in the genetic department. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> my dad was my dad was alcoholic, and he was really overweight, and he he had no hair. Yeah, but he had hair everywhere else on his body. So I got hair on my shoulders, back, chest. <laughs> <laughs> the way you're talking about. The way you're talking about the pills make you feel with food and stuff, I get like that sometimes. Like I have, he's like, I can eat like a cow. Like I can eat unbelievable amounts of food where you would say like, there is no way I could eat it all, and I can put it all away. Like I can eat like a, one of those big ass Carvel ice cream cakes. Like I can sit down and eat the whole thing. Like I can eat so much crap, but at the same time, I can go two or three days without really eating much at all, just because I don't even think about it. I just, you know, like you said, you just, it, it's it's not something that your body needs. It's just something you, you have to do. Like I have to remind myself to go and eat. You know, it's 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 kind of weird. What's your cut like headed into a fight? Like, what are you walking around at? How much are you cutting? Um, I'm I'm walking at like between 170 and 175, and I'll usually be that weight until like maybe a week and a half out, and then I'll like I eat like a fat kid like all the time. Like I really don't diet at all. Um, mm -hmm. I just I stay away from like crap like ice cream and candy and all that kind of stuff. You know, for the most part, just in general, just because I just I don't feel good because I work out so much. If I eat that stuff, I don't feel that good. So I'll eat ice cream once in a while, but it's nothing like I eat on a normal basis. And uh, like the, a week out from the fight, I'll be like 168, 170, and I'll just I'll cut water from there. So I'll, I'll drop 15 pounds in water like from like Thursday afternoon till Friday at weigh-ins. So I'll drop 15 pounds. So you, you heard it. You cut, you cut water over the course of a week. I mean, you just I mean, you well, some people, without drinking. How does that work? Some people do will, will do two different ways. Like the... I know, like, uh, Jeremy Horn used to do, like, he would limit it himself to, you know, like a small cup of water every single day for, like, two weeks out, and he would slowly dehydrate himself over the course of a couple weeks, and then he would he would make weight. I do the opposite. I drink, like, like a gallon to two gallons a day every single day, like, starting three weeks out from the fight, two weeks out from the fight. And Man, cut, cutting water, that, that doesn't sound healthy at all. It sounds like your liver would be getting destroyed. It definitely does take a, a toll on your liver, but I do it twice a year. You know, so it's not like I'm not doing it, you know, all the time. Uh, but I, I drink tons of water for a couple of weeks, and basically your, your body just starts flushing out everything. You, what you really try to do is get all the salt and sodium out of your system. And uh, my weight will go up, and that's why I'll be like 72, 74. And, uh, you know, and then as soon as I, 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 I trick my body, I get my body in the habit of dumping out all this water. And then all of a sudden, you know, come Thursday afternoon, I stop giving it water, and it continues to push all the water out, thinking it's going to get more, and then it doesn't. And really? then, so you like super hydrate going into the fight? Yep. Yep. Then, exactly. huh. Yep. Like, and, well, what does what does having water in your body have to do with the fight, though? I mean, like to cut weight. You know, I, like I fight in uh, at one. So you, so oh, so you're just trying to make the weight scale. Yeah. yeah this exactly. is a guy who weighs 170 to 175 every day and fights at 155. Yeah. So this is his technique for dropping 15 pounds worth of water yep. out of his body, and yeah, some guys, you know, 
there's a balance. So, and, and Joe's, of course, the expert on this. But it, it, if you cut too much, then you can enter a fight without any you know, energy, without any you know, stamina. So, so no, just you know, smart that thanks, clearly. Your brain needs water to a function. Well, and they get exhausted, right? Mm -hmm. So even though they may be the bigger guy in the fight, they don't have enough energy to, to last the fight. And they might be better off fighting against bigger people, but I'm, with, you know, full energy. I know I'm not probably not in the position to say this. Have you ever considered trying fiber pills to drop weight? Uh, I mean, did they, I, 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 honestly, I don't... Because your body like, can carry almost 20 pounds of poop in it at a time. Yeah, you could be like that one guy from Ultimate Fire who went for the Kalana to drop weight. <laughs> oh, no, Tim Silver, right? Is that the guy? Remember that? Yeah, no, he... Abe hey, Rudiger. But Tim pooed himself during one of the Tim, matches. Tim did poop himself during a fight. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have no problem pooping. Like, I spent 40 minutes pooping over the course of a day. Nice. <laughs> uh, oh so, I'm going to forget. He, he wanted to cut that weight. For those who don't know, he wanted to cut weight uh, for the for the fight on the Ultimate Fighter TV show. Oh, and uh, exactly what you're talking about. And he, and he went my to... Season. He, he elected to, to, to use it colonic rather than – I don't remember who the coach of the show was at that time, but uh, – That was him. my season. Uh, I got a question. Could oh, you cheat? Was, hold on. Let him oh, tell wow. the story. No, no but he was, he was telling me. He's like, you know, you just need to work it off, man. He's, he's telling me to get in the sauna. He's telling him to work, and he won't do it. He goes for the colonic. And for those of you who don't know what a colonic is, just Google it. it and it, it was hilarious. <laughs> don't, don't image search it. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, um, that was my season the Ultimate Fighter. BJ Pan was the coach. Uh, that was Gabe Rudiger. He was on my team, and I actually ended up fighting him and beating him up in Boston. Like you know, uh, what did I do it last November, this past November, in uh, or August. Uh, but anyways, he uh, he he was running around telling everyone, you know, and he has to make 155 pounds. So you have like two days notice. So it, it's much tougher to make weight on the Ultimate Fighter. So he has two days notice, and he's like walking at like 175, 176, yeah, 178 at one point. Yeah, I, think. Just, I still remember. And and like he knows that he has to make weight. Or he, he, he's going to have the, you know, he might have to make weight. And he's eating, like, ice cream cake. Or we're all coming back from the gym. And we're all eating, like, pasta and things like that because, you know, we just worked out. We're hungry. Our weight's all pretty good. He would eat, like, half of a pepper while we were eating, you know, pasta. He would make sure that we knew he was eating half of a pepper. And then everyone kind of broke off. He'd be, like, pounding bowls of cereal. It was, like, <laughs> awful. And then he tried to make weight, failed, got kicked off the show. I stood over him and squeezed an IV bag into him. The whole, the whole thing was just a disgrace. It was pretty bad. Oh, I remember that. Hey, so in the being on the show, got, being on the old. I got, fire, I got a question huh? real quick. Well, you get off your turn, wings. Hold on. <laughs> being on. <laughs> The ultimate fighter. Like, what, what was the hard part about that? Was it the mental thing? Was it all the uh, There's no contact. You, you have no contact with your family or outside. Like, you have no music. You have no internet. You have no Xbox. I know everyone's crying right now. Um, <laughs> you, have, you have no access. You, you have no outside stimulation. So, like, you, you don't get a newspaper. You don't have any kind of books. You have nothing. You have you and the other fighters that are in the house and a bunch of cameramen that don't say anything. and They're not allowed to talk to you. So, in the show, you came off as better able to deal with that than most of the other fighters but the editing makes it tricky to figure out what the reality is like it, some yeah. guys would go crazy would hang on the raptors like monkeys and, and you were just kind of like you know steady yeah you know i i basically um I, i'm 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 definitely an introvert, introvert to begin with like i'm definitely you know I'm, I'm i'm i would rather not say something and think about it than open my mouth and look like a retard so um, you know, and, and being on TV, I understood how it can, how you can be portrayed, and how things can be taken out of context, and so I was like very careful with everything I said or did, and uh, like I would basically, we would get up, we, we had the early training session, so we we trained at I think seven, so we'd be back to the house around like nine nine thirty, we'd eat, I'd go and I'd take a nap, I'd get up, I'd eat, we'd go to the gym, I'd go to I'd go to bed early, like I missed so many things because I was sleeping, I was probably sleeping like twelve or thirteen hours a day. Whereas everyone else was probably sleeping, you know, six hours a day and just, you know, acting like retards in the house. I just slept, just kept myself off the camera. Wings, I'm sorry, I cut you off. What was that? I was wondering if you could cheat that way. You, you, I, you weigh in, I guess, like a day before the match or something like that. Yep. Could you just pound water during that period and get back up to 175 and fight? Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm up to 75, but I'm up to 170 or so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying, but you weigh in at 155, and you could, and if you take all the water out, and you could drink the water again and go into the fight at 175 the next day. Oh, yeah, place that, that's, that's what everyone does, you know. And they'll do, you know, you can do IVs. You can, you know, you can definitely, yeah. Why, that's, don't, why don't they just fight at 175 then? Because someone will still cut. <laughs> you say, okay, 
dehydrate. And you say, okay, I won't dehydrate. And then you're 190 and you still cut to 75. People will still do it. You, you really can't ever stop weight cutting. You know, guys will, and then they have to do day before because if you try to weigh in guys right before, like say they try to make us weigh in at 55 and then fight like directly after, guys will still cut. And then they're, they're probably, they probably won't be 75, but they'll probably be 65, cutting down to 55. And then they dehydrate. And then they get in that, like what you said before, is it dehydrates your brain. You know, in trauma and everything like that, concussions are way worse when you're dehydrated. Yeah. So, so, so the reason people cut, I think some guys in the stream don't get it. it you want to be like a big guy in the fight. You know, if one guy said, why can't you train at your fight weight? Well, you know, if that was your walk around weight, then you'd actually be a 155 pounder fighting against 170 pound men. You need to be that 170 pound guy who just hit 155 for a few minutes and yep. goes back up. Yeah, because I mean, like, otherwise I have to fight a guy that's like St. Pierre, who he fights at 170, you know, but he's not walking at 170. He's walking at, you know, probably 195, 200 pounds. Right. So, you know what I mean? So it's like, you kind of have to, in the interest of safety, you have to do it 24 hours before so that, you know, people will cut and everyone will struggle to make it. And, you know, I, I would definitely, I would love it if we didn't, have, if no one would cut weight and they could stop it. They just, there's, there's no way you can do that. You can't stop yeah. that. Like a 170 pound man like Joe would be fighting against 100. I mean, UFC is like a multi million dollar company. Couldn't they hire somebody like the day before to just follow you around after you weigh in? <laughs> yeah. Like, but you're you getting into talk, like semantics. You're talking, I'm, just, I'm just saying. 20 guys on a card. You know, there's 10 fights. You get 20 guys on a card, and they have a card pretty much every week. You know what I'm, I'm sure, sure. So most people take the job for like $10 an hour. Yeah, right? That's what they should I'm do. Just, you you really can't combat it. It's done in every. It's done in boxing as well. I mean, it's done it's in all boxing, wrestling. Yeah, it's done. It's well, done speaking of boxing, if you guys ever want me to take a fall for a couple million dollars, I'm down to take a punch to the face. <laughs> <laughs> they could tell everyone you're Aki Bono, and then just schedule like a friend. <laughs> I'll shave my head, and you can say I'm Butterbean. Yeah, Wait, right? you can make so much money. Like all you gotta do is get your YouTube subscribers in on this. Like, hey, you've always wanted to hit me. <laughs> All right, $100, $100 a punch, nothing below the belt. Let's go. Oh, I was thinking a different way, like Wings of Redemption versus Joe Lozon. You know, get a good five grand on the line, winner gets half, loser gets half. You good to go. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> He'll do it. He said he won't even hurt you. He'll, he knows where you, when your arm's just before the breaking point. Yeah, yeah. Wings yeah. will go. It's got to be a knockout, though. Wings will go. In that situation, I'd just be like, look, just hit me in the chin, make it quick. I don't <laughs> Don't beat me up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This subscriber thing, they did punch me in the face. I could take a lot of them because I got a nice, squishy body. <laughs> give, give them all a body shot. Let them punch you in the body. It's like padding. Yeah. Oh God. So, you know, I'm getting the big head with this, uh, you know, premium guest on Painkiller already. And we had <laughs> Joe and we talked about fighting all week. Dude, if we could get Charlie Sheen, I'd talk about sex and drugs all week long, <laughs> all night. That's surely, the, that's surely the catch line to get him. Uh, let's get Jake the Snake and like, what's up? We, we'll talk about cocaine and how to do it. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I would, uh, yeah. So, you, like, so you, you want to talk about people who are in their area of expertise, right? You talk to Joe, you talk about fighting. If I get Jesus on here, I'm going to talk about... I don't know, creation of the Bible or something. If I get Charlie Sheen, there is no higher expert on women for money. Hookers and cocaine. There you go, <laughs> hookers and coke. That's, <laughs> I think maybe we found our next, our, our next target, painkiller. So, well, speaking of hookers, Joe, have you ever indulged? Oh, my God. Hookers? No way. I'm not paying for that shit. Dude, how easy <laughs> is it to get girls being a UFC fighter? It like, I'm thinking this is helped. better than musician. The problem is I really don't want to go after the girls that are trying to chase a fighter. Yeah, the exactly. girls. I've girl. seen the ring girls. They look worth chasing. The, the ring girls are definitely hot, for sure. Yeah. And they're a hot person, too. Like, when you see them in, like, normal clothes, they look way better than they do when they're all dressed up as a ring car girl. For sure. Hmm. Yep. And do they do they date fighters? Um, I think Ariane dates someone. Um, but, I mean, they could. You know, I don't know what the UFC's policy on, is on it. Um, yeah, and the best part about it, being a fighter, I mean, you would have no problem like overpowering one of them and just taking her away with them. <laughs> I mean, you should have done that you in could... your Russia voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you put her in chill cold, she wake up, it is happy time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe happy time a little bit before she wake up. You never know. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I always pictured okay, FPS Rush as like um like one of those what was that game that had Spawn and like Solid Snake on it and all those Zelda characters that <laughs> like guest starred. I, I could picture FPS Rush on a fighting game like that. <laughs> Like do the crazy move and like an AK forty seven comes out of nowhere like yeah feel like an AK forty seven juggle oh my god <laughs> all, right. all right guys I think we're wrapping up the podcast now Wings right. you want to see us out yeah the, all right guys that was painkiller already episode forty one with with your boy Joe Lozon um you got anything you we want to shout out Joe nope glad to be on the show thank you glad to be on the show right. Peace, guys. later anytime. All right, Joe, so just so you understand, uh, we're not recording the podcast anymore, the iTunes part, but you're still in the okay. live stream, so this okay. isn't, like, private. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't want you to be, like, yeah. this is oh. the where, you, where, where you need to be, like, yeah, so all those ring girls, oh, man, the other guy. <laughs> 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 was uh, Ariani goes out with someone. I think Brittany Palmer goes out with uh, Cowboy Cerrone, too. So I guess that, that's two of them, so I guess they do. I didn't, I didn't, we just don't want you to be like, so yeah, Dana just like beat this one hooker to death with a lip. <laughs> I was like, well, what are you doing, man? And he was like, don't you say a word. <laughs> That's not what you want to say now because there's like 2,000 people listening. Is it that many people on this right now? 2,000? Yeah. I'm just guessing. Yeah. I don't have it. 1,964. Oh, a lot of people. Yep. So I was thinking about putting it on like Sure Dog or something. Then I was like, no, I don't know if Joe would want that. Like, you know, you know I, I don't, I don't mind it. Like, Share Dog is just different. It, it's like, like there's zero like accountability for anything. It's just every single thread is just like hating on fighters, and it's just it's kind of, it's like fighting. Like, fight fans are the most fickle people ever. It's like when you win, you are the greatest fighter. You are the second coming of Christ. Da da da. When you lose, oh, so and so is washed up. They suck. It's like, it's bad. And Share Dog is the is the worst on all that stuff. Uh, what's your opinion on Floyd Mayweather? Um, super talented boxer, you know what I mean? Like, would not do well against an MMA guy, you know? No, I'm, I'm just talking about in general how he always dodges people. I mean, he's, you know, it, does it really make a lot of sense for him to fight a Manny Pacquiao? He's going to make, you know, $20 million regardless of who he fights. Why, why fight the dangerous fight? Why not, you know, why, why go and take Yeah, at, at that point, like, it's protect yourself. Like, like, if he goes in there with Manny and gets his brain bashed in, his next fight isn't going to be a $20 million fight. No, I'm not talking about getting hurt. I'm talking about well, the man's obviously already made his millions. He, he's a, he's a made Dude, man at this you point. You can never make it now. Now all you have is your dynasty. <laughs> like, <laughs> Kyle talks. Like, like, like I mean, seriously. I mean, right now, right now his about. legacy is he, he. Right now his legacy. He's a Dodger. You don't give a shit. Let me. If you get a hundred million dollars in the bank, you're telling me you're not interested in all anymore. Yeah. No, and you got to remember too. Freaking boxing is not patty cake. I mean, there's a very good chance against a guy like Manny Pacquiao he get knocked out. You know why even why even risk that? Really, I would if if I were picking a career for myself, like money aside, like if we're just talking about injury, possible injury, I would say MMA is much safer than boxing. I would say because look at the guys who are like the old school boxers, look at Muhammad Ali and people who who have ended up with brain damage and yeah, it, it's, it's more long term. Box boxing is the stupidest thing you could ever do. It's it's okay. You and I are gonna put on gloves, but you're gonna make sure that our hands stay healthy, and we're gonna smash each other in the face until one of us can't stand. Yeah, and then, exactly. And then we're going to give you 10 seconds to stand back up, and then I'm going to make sure you get a second concussion. It's and ridiculous. It's, it's it's the stupidest thing. I've had fights, though, MMA fights, where I didn't throw a single punch. I didn't get hit with a single punch. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've caught things. You know, and, and boxers, like, the scary part of I me, mean, what's scarier than, than, you know, injuring your brain? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, I, exactly. I could break People my arm. I could break my hand. Dude, you, you, there's no coming back from damaging your brain. See, like, and that's what, like, a lot of the people who are negative against uh, the UFC and mixed martial arts in general don't get. It's usually the mothers. It's it's usually the 35-year-old mom, soccer mom who's, who's, like, you know, railing against the sport. But the, the truth about it is, I mean, boxing, you're like you said, you've got this big-ass padded glove, and you're just – and yeah. don't get me wrong. Those aren't soft blows. Those are incredibly powerful blows. But they're cushioned blows over and over and over and making brain. It's just I it's like I said a minute ago, like like you know, just hit me in the chin, it'll be over. That one punch, you know, knockout to the chin isn't gonna cause me any brain damage. It's gonna give you a concussion, but I'm not gonna wake up tomorrow like a fucking eating fruit loops out of a fucking tin can in the gutter or something. I, I, I've, I've heard so many stories about boxers that like they'll go in, they'll spar, 
and then they'll be like going in like the, the the change room to wash up or something like that, and they'll be trying to wash their face with their headgear still on, or yeah. they'll be they'll be walking outside looking for a car that they sold three years ago. You know what I mean? Like you don't you don't get that with jujitsu guys and things like that. It's like that, that that's a special kind of punishment that your brain takes. That you know, in boxing, like I'll never ever let when I do have kids, I'll never let my kids do boxing. I go let them hit mitts, I'll let them hit the bag, but I guarantee you they will never ever compete in boxing. It won't happen. Okay. Not even Muay Thai, I don't think. And I think that you know, if they want to do MMA or something where the entire sole focus is not to get smashed in the face, then sure. Like I'm, like I love MMA, I love jujitsu, you know, but I will never let my kids do do boxing. Hmm. I mean, we're, you're letting off. So uh, I've seen that one MMA fight where the guy like did a flying knee and bust that guy's head open like an axe. Yeah, there's been a couple like that. Uh, Vitor Belfort did that. Uh, Marvin Eastman one time, and it looked like he got hit in the head with an axe. There's been a couple that have happened like yeah. that. Yeah, there have been those thin punches. Like, um, uh, who did Chuck the Iceman fight, and he broke his orbital bone? It was a... Uh, oh, yeah. Um, it was like a fight he didn't have to take because he was in line for a title shot, but he just did it anyway. Think, Rodriguez or something? Or... I don't even know. Is that the fight I'm thinking of, though? No, I, I'm, I'm trying to think. The uh, Chuck Liddell fight? Yeah, yeah, definitely check with L fight. I got uh, Google. I don't know. Broken orbitals are actually kind of common. Like, they become more common. Like, uh, Kaushik got a broken orbital against uh, St. Pierre recently. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, it happens, you know. But honestly, like, one of those, like, a knee or something like that that, you know, causes a big cut, the scar is not the big deal. You know, it, it's the, the, the head trauma. You know what I mean? Like, you know, a, a scar, okay, it sucks you got a scar. But getting your head rocked like that is definitely the worst part of that. It's not really the cut. Like I've been cut. I've gotten cut. I kind of jinx myself. Um, before one of my fights, I, I talked about how I had skin like a baby and I'd never been cut, and then I got elbowed in the head and I got cut. <laughs> and then <laughs> my next fight, I got elbowed in the head and I got cut. So I really don't brag about it anymore. Scar <laughs> <laughs> is not a big deal, though. It's really not. I mean, it's not, the, it's not ideal, but a, bit, uh, a giant scar on your head make you look cool as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple oh little ones. I think I'm thinking of Vernon White, by the way. How are your ears, man? Do you have normal looking ears? I didn't. You know, uh, my ears, I was before. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't fit for anything. But now they've definitely gotten thicker. And now I just say, oh, no, it's just the cauliflower ear. Yeah, but yeah, my ears are pretty, you know, they're hard as a rock. Like, I, I can't put like regular, you know, earbuds in my ears anymore. And yeah. question, why is it that when the guys get the really bad cauliflowers that they don't get them fixed? Uh, what's going to happen if he gets it fixed? It's going to be I'm back. But come on, wear look, headgear when he trains. Yeah, it looks, it, that's it not looks bad though. Yeah, but you know, it's like if, if this is what you're doing, if you train so much that you got bad cauliflower ear like that, like for me, like it, it, it's not going to do me any point to to go and you know get it taken care of. You know, like if I'm done fighting, maybe, but I'm always going to do jujitsu. I'm never going to stop that. You know, and I'm I'm not trying to be an actor, or a model, or anything like that. You know, not that worried. You could wear the headgear, right? I mean, you, you could throw in the, <laughs> the ear protection. You could. Sometimes headgear makes it worse, though, because the headgear shifts just a little bit, and then, like, the edge of it, you know, just grinds in here and makes it worse. It can it can definitely – it can help if, you, if you're religious about it, and when you get cauliflower, you stop right away. But a lot of times, you know, it, you'll, you'll still get it either way. Gotcha. <sighs> All right. I think they oh, need a mod band, too. You think what? What was that? I think they need a mod band in chat. I don't know. They're asking it. Uh, so on the stream, they're saying, you know, can anyone man a bomb, ban a mod? And uh, only me, the, the broadcaster, can ban mods. There's, there's only two levels, like broadcaster and mod. But uh, everyone wants me to talk about this video I put up. Stupid people are stupid. <laughs> I got a question for you. Go ahead and that. Yeah. I wonder. Ahead. I wonder if the makeup community of YouTube fights like the Call of Duty ones. Mm -hmm. They don't. That they Michelle don't. fan is never going after anybody. <laughs> I'm gonna say I could pick, I could picture Juicy Star talking shit about Ellie. I just want to like just rub my face like all oh, over. Why, why do you know who two of them are? <laughs> <laughs> well, Michelle Fan is like always like getting featured on the front page of the YouTube. Like you gotta keep a, keep in mind like like we you stare at the we stare at the front page of YouTube for probably an hour or two a day, just glancing at it over and over, just making seeing what's what. You, it's, you it's, gotta you gotta keep eye on your competition. We're like stockbrokers <laughs> watching the watching the ticker. <laughs> Hope you have like six monitors in front of you. 
Only three? Come I on. have two. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got two now, yeah. Actually, I have three because there's more than one computer. But, um, uh, oh, oh, so everyone wants to talk about this stupid people are stupid video. Joe probably didn't even see it. But, uh, I, saw, I, I did see oh, it. Did you? All right. So I put up this video and um, uh, I was in a lobby and the kid was being kind of snarky and sarcastic. And uh, what happened was before that, I was on it. I was in a video with Onslaught, his road to commander. And I was like, I don't know. I talked a minor bit of trash. Oh, I asked the guy if we could still be friends. And people thought my lines were funny. So I was like, oh, maybe this video will be in that same genre. Like, that was my line of thinking as I uploaded it. It's like, people are going to get a kick out of this because me and this, uh, you know, disrespectful teenager or whatever he was. Um, we went back and forth and he was like, oh, you upload videos to YouTube. That's so lame. I can hardly get over it. And I'm like, you're playing games with me on Saturday night. This is like a guy in a strip club calling me a perv, you know, like who are you to be passing judgment? And, um, uh, like I thought it would be a funny line. I thought people might like the video anyway. Uh, people watch this video and they, they're like, you yeah, know, but that kid apologized to you. Some people have seriously defective sarcasm detectors. This yeah, guy, okay. They're, <laughs> they're, that guy was dripping with sarcasm to the point that there was a puddle next to him. And uh, um, then, you know, he even went on after that and said things like, you know, T-Bar, what prestige are you? And I forget what prestige he was. We'll say seventh. And he's like, oh, I'm really proud of you, boy. That's quite the accomplishment. Did they also think that that was, like, really cool? And then um, to throw, like, you know, gas on the on the fire here, El Press put up this video. Now, El Presador is just sub whoring right that's what he does he um when he you know he sits there and bad mouths the xbox when he wants ps3 guys then he bad mouths the ps3 when he wants xbox guys he bad mouths the iphone when that's all hot he, he this is like what his channel is it, it's a trolling channel and um if people don't know that then they probably haven't seen all his videos like this is what he does he even put up a video where he told everyone that this is a trolling channel that you guys are incredibly easy to troll that uh, i just sit back here and laugh at the whole thing but that's that's what his gig is and um and i'm his newest iphone right he's found like oh you know what i'm gonna blast woody's gamer tag over this and go at it so um yeah. so that's what el presador did what what kind of bummed me about the el presador response though is that i not that we were like tight or anything like we've talked on skype once or twice and um like i wrote him i did this like el presador parody video where i kind of did a, a commentary in the style of his and try to tackle a tree and stuff like that and i wrote him in advance and i was like hey i was thinking about doing this i want to make sure that um you know that you're cool with it and he's like yeah man i'm cool because um you know he's just looking to grow and he did i got him like thousands of subs off of that video and you know told everyone that i liked the stuff and put a link to his channel and, and whatever so um and then this came out of the blue and it was kind of backstabby because you know, like I never did anything to him but help him grow his channel. Then he turned around and, and did Thanks, that Emma. to me. So, um, you know, that's that's how that went down. He, uh, he he'll do anything for growth, including stab me in the back. And he and all that stuff he said about talking to the guy about the kid's age and whatnot that was totally made up. He said that um, um, uh, that the kid canceled his Xbox account. Nope, <laughs> the kid still got his Xbox account. He's still playing, you know, you, you can go and check out like his activity on Xbox and stuff because he has it all public. And, did uh, you see my comment on that video? I, I did. Oh, not your comment on the video. I saw your response video. Oh, the comment. The comment, I was like, he's like, I don't know what to tell this kid. I'm like, I do. $10 changes his account name. He's out of the, <laughs> he's out of the world. <laughs> You know, and, and um, so like and it was never meant to be a call to action against this kid. What it was meant to be was a video kind of like the one we did in Onslaught, right? Do you remember like Wings, when you um, kind of went back and forth Called with out those Street guys Marine. from um, yeah, Street Marine or, or the, what was the guy? Um, Gaming Legacy, right? You know, you talk yeah. about all those guys. I thought what I did was, was kind of mild in comparison to the back and forth with Gaming Legacy. And, um, but wow, people just went like bonkers. And what happens with these YouTube videos is like it, people will set a couple tones and, and when they read like the highest rated comments, everyone sort of le leaves a comment of a similar vein. And, um, and yeah, so, uh, guys just, you know, El Prez was opportunistic about it. That's, that's what he does with his channel. And he's a grown up. If he listens to this, he'll hear, <laughs> he'll be like, yep, Woody's completely right. I do it with the PS3. I do it with the Xbox. I do it with the iPhone. I do it with Woody. I'm just one of the things that he hates on to get attention. Yeah, he, he got me today. Oh, did he? Yeah, he, in the video I responded to your video. I said that we're, you know, we're kind of famous, and 
we are. We're we're famous. Like I, I'm I'm known around the world. I mean, I'm, no. I'm not trying to say I'm not Joe Lowe. What are you trying to say? No. Look at that little map at the bottom of Pinkill already. <laughs> <laughs> See yeah, those but- red dots? That's around the world, Kyle. <laughs> one, one reason you guys get trolled is because you always respond to it. They can say whatever they want about me. First of all, if if you guys hear somebody say, you know, FPS Kyle's a faggot, don't let me know because I don't care and I'm not going to respond. And I might just block you for trying to get me to troll back. I don't care. They can say whatever they want about me. They can say I eat shit. They can say I'm a homosexual. They can say you that don't, you don't consider that we're we're semi famous, Kyle. Oh, you don't I, think, think, I get recognized. I get recognized maybe once a month. I'm just saying. I'm just saying is all. No, we're, not, not, we're, we're not A-list celebrity. No, no, of course not. It's YouTube. And Joe I mean, on there. He's, a, he's bigger than us. But the yeah, fact is, we're still known worldwide. We fit into the definition of famous. Uh, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess you have to break down the word famous to its parts and define what yeah. fame is. If there's People have a thing as an by... F-level celebrity. Yeah, yeah. If, <laughs> if, if, if you're <laughs> F-level celebrities, then we're F-level celebrities. And I picture the FPS Russia character going up to maybe a B or C level celebrity. Maybe. I, I think I'm right that. there in terms of fame with that guy that said Hide your wife, hide your sister. They raping people up here. <laughs> like, like that is my it's level. Dude, that, guy, <laughs> that guy is like a C or a D lister. You yeah, think? I don't like. I bet I don't, compared to my like collective views to his. Dude, that guy walks down the street. Oh no, your collective views don't compare to his. Oh, <laughs> okay, maybe I'm wrong then. Yeah. No, go. He's got the number three most viewed video of all time on YouTube. Oh, does he? Okay. Yeah. How many views is it? Ah, uh, you know, like 150 million, something like that. And that's just one of them. It got re-uploaded so many times. You're talking about a guy with half a billion views, I would say. I tap. All right. The guy, <laughs> the guy is... Uh, He's timing in your windows. He's snatching your people up. <laughs> that's not bad. But, um, but yeah, to wrap up that whole thing, I didn't mean to attack this kid. I thought it was going to be a funny back and forth, kind of like the Road to Commander series. When, uh, when everyone started interpreting it the wrong way, on the chance that this guy was getting attacked... I took the video. I actually made it unlisted, you know, so um, so that people wouldn't watch the video anymore. There's my response to that. Yep. So but the, the main problem that you guys had with Woody's video is honestly that you don't understand sarcasm. So I, I often have. I've said many times in my videos, sarcasm. Google it, because p- you you don't understand and you 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 just won't understand when somebody's trolling you and somebody's making fun of you right to your face if you don't understand sarcasm. Yeah, people were like, oh, he apologized to you. What's wrong? And I'm like, really? You bought that apology? That apology was ridiculous. That apology in itself was an insult. Like, he was over the top bragging me with the apology. Oh, and... you're so good. Like, I, I don't know what I was thinking talking to you anyway. I don't know. And, and people were like, wow, he must really like you. Yeah, he does. Did you yeah, guys exactly see that Reverend Burn that. kid, though? Yes. Yeah, the, the guy who talked about you. Oh, yeah. yeah he screams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wonder how much he does weigh, though. I mean, like, I'm a big guy, but I look small compared to him. I, first of all, I I, I hope that guy turns a corner in his life because he looks very unhealthy. Like he doesn't like. I'm not I mean, he does. Though, does he doesn't look human. It's like I'm not going to go that far. I'm just saying he looks very unhealthy, and it looks like uh, look he's Joe's morbid. Opinion. That guy's morbidly obese, and uh, I, I I seriously like hope for his, for his sake that he. You know, cuts back and. You ever seen Reverend Byrne, Joe? Ever seen what? Reverend Byrne. No, who's that? I'll, I'll, I'll send a link to you on him. Back down, back down, back down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Reverend Byrne is uh, he's in the YouTube scene, and uh, I guess he does some gameplay commentary. I've, I've seen a couple of his videos, but mostly I see him yelling at his camera, like in real he's life. He's a vlogger. That's what he does. Oh, he's a vlogger. Okay, and. Um, but he's a vlogger, but he's in the Call of Duty community too, right? Like, you know, more more so than like uh, you know, the Storm or something like that. Yeah. You know, he, he he sort of hangs and watches us and does his oh. thing. But oh, um, yeah. uh, what he is is a really really big guy who kind of like his thing is that like he, he he's he's in no way ashamed of his body. He does all his comment- <laughs> I can't <laughs> hear it. So he does all his commentaries like with his shirt off and. Um, uh, and he screams at the camera, as you, as you just heard a little bit. <laughs> and um, but like I, I look at him, and like I, I guess I'm kind of happy for him that he seems to accept his body image. But I, I had this notion that in private, he wishes He's, he had a way to turn it around. I'd go so almost as suicidal. 
Well, I don't know. You know that. I'm not gonna go after it, guy like that. But it, I, 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 I've had suicidal thoughts, and I'm nowhere near this guy's size. Well, who hasn't had suicidal thoughts? Oh, well, we all know Kyle and his girls. But <laughs> what, if I ever kill myself, it's gonna upload on YouTube. You guys stay tuned for that one. <laughs> I just, you're gonna, I'm gonna get it, dude. Hook me up, dude. All right, Kyle, let's do you a stack, proper right? editing. If one of us ever it. kills each, uh, kills ourselves, then videotape it and get a thumb drive in the mail to the other, right? You know, we're gonna make, <laughs> gotta get some views out of it. I'll, I'll, I'll live stream it to you, and you can cap it and upload it. <laughs> right. okay, you gotta say editing because you gotta show Kyle at the end of the video saying it was a joke, so it'll stay on YouTube. <laughs> oh yeah, just kidding. Kyle, what level are you on in zombies? 41. Did you die in that game? No. Did, like, what happened? Um, Have you been playing just, it solid through the podcast? Yeah. You know, Pony noobs. Pony. Zombie noobs. Zombie, Zombie noobs. Yeah. Zombies are all yeah. noobs anyway. They only have brains. At level 41, they're less newbie than me. Nah, they're, yeah. just, uh, they're just like retard strong, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what's your opinion on somebody like that, Joe? Um... On, on what exactly? The, the link I sent you. I'm like, um, that guy is freaking enormous. I don't know. I, I think it'd be funny if I could actually play the audio, but I think it'll it'll echo to you guys, so I don't want to kill you. Yeah. But uh, dude, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how. Like, I mean, maybe you can tell me. I mean, I, I just don't see how people like. Did you just find yourself that big, or did you slowly see yourself and just not care enough until it was too late? Well, I have. A, I was uh, shot in the leg, and I was probably well, hold on, weight. Hold on. You were shot in the leg. Yeah, I was shot in the right kneecap, and there, and I was about 14 at the time. And um, what happened is I had a lot of downtime, and I started gaining a lot of weight. Yeah. And and it kind of became a way of life, you know. I, I enjoyed eat. I got I got addicted to eating. It was like boom, boom, and I it, it was ne I never just bloomed up like from 14 to like 16. I went from like maybe you know 140 ish to about 200 toward the end of high school. It was around 250. You know, then then so on and so on, just kept going, kept going, kept going. And then I got laid off from my job about a year or so ago, and I put on another 50 pounds because I was sitting home playing video games, trying to get a YouTube career started. Yep. And I, I find myself, I was, I think I, at my, my heaviest, I was at 425. And I'm like, dude, I got to, this is killing me. I got to do something about this. So I looked into the surgery, and we had the story in the podcast. Yep. And I'm, I'm getting back on it, you know. Instead of complaining about my knee, I, w I wear a brace to help me support it. Yep. And, now, and things you, of that nature. Do you think that there was a that it wasn't that bad until, you know, you basically just didn't, didn't give a shit for a while and then yeah, you, you give you, a shit you, it was almost too late? You, you get to the point where you don't give a shit for about a month and then you start carrying it again. Yep. And you stay on it about two weeks and then you're like, this shit's hard. You know, you want to eat pizza, you want to drink Coke and. So, yep. man, I miss all that stuff, and then you just fall off the bandwagon. You go at it again for another two months. Yep. Man, I'm looking forward to my trip. To, not to get too far off topic here, but the home run in Pete's in Chicago. I'm so excited for that. <laughs> I'm going yeah, to Chicago it, later this but, month. But oh. the reason I'm bringing this guy up to you because he started calling me out because I, I talked about him in the last podcast. I go, like, I didn't want to be like Reverend Byrne, you know, a guy yep. that's probably 500 some pounds and, and glorifying his obesity to try to make a living. Yeah. And, you know, because one of my things that motivates me to keep dieting, keep exercising every time I want to eat, like, go out, order a large pizza. I go on YouTube and I look up morbidly obese and see these guys got, got like eight paramedic carrying them into their house. Yep. You know, they're. And I mean, I see a lot of things in me. Like, I seen one of them, this guy had a little dog as a companion. I went out and bought a little dog to be a companion, you know, because oh. I was always in the house. And that shit, I was like, damn, dude, that shit makes you want to cry. Yeah. No, it was definitely tough, for sure. And I was like, I, actually, I called him out to try to maybe see, put a fire under him to maybe he'll start it. He's a vlogger right now. He should eat it up just trying to get it. people eat that up. Be blogging, yeah, waiting it's, and stuff. It's inspiring. Like, um, when a guy's too heavy, <laughs> everyone gives him a hard time. When a guy's on his way down, everyone's on his side. Yeah, I don't know. This, we're talking about a guy whose catchphrase is "suck my man titties, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> like, I, mean, I, I think he's pretty happy with his current weight. He may want to get bigger. He, he's not happy. I mean, uh, being a big guy, you don't have sex appeal. You don't have nothing. All you have is your personality, and people don't want to be around a negative Nelly. So the only way you could attract friends or maybe female attention was Dude. to be that overly happy guy. 
There's plenty and, of ladies out there who want a big guy to sit on their face. No, I know there aren't. Is. I know there, <laughs> there, there is girls that there is the girls that like big guys. I mean, I've met a few of them, but the fact is, even if you if you're a big guy and they and they want to like you, a shitty personality push them right away. So the only thing you have to control that you can easily control is your personality. So you put on this fake persona, and Reverend Byrne is one of those fake personas. I bet you money he's very unhappy with his life. He probably sits around. He probably plays a lot of PlayStation. You know, he's probably on disability. To be honest with you, from the way from the I way hope he, he is. Like if I were him, I'd definitely go for. Like, because I, he, I don't he want to honestly too much. Hurt. I don't want to like to be hating on him too much or for, for to seem like that. You got to keep in mind we're dealing with people who have no sense of sarcasm and are an average age of about fourteen or fifteen. So they're going right over there and saying, "Hey, pizza face, go suck a dick yeah. or something." Uh, that, that, that Machinima made me proud today, though. I gotta say you that that video that Brett, he put up, Machinima went and had it took down without me asking. <laughs> I told you they would. I told you just to call him. I, I, I didn't even call him. They just oh, took it down. Machinima's this gonna make the it Reverend Burn ones. Yeah. yeah, the Wings of Failure video. Yeah, Machinima's gonna yeah, make you very yeah. proud in the coming weeks. Yeah. Did you uh, guys box him yet? Uh, Kyle said he didn't want to do it. I'm doing it. I am. Um... I need to read the email. I was at work when it came in. I haven't read it yet. Well, it has nothing to do with First of all, the box is ineffective. If it were something like where I thought that I could send them a thousand, they could send me a thousand, I'd do it. But it's honestly, it's more like I'm going to send them three and they're going to send me three. That's honestly about the correct numbers of a week of getting somebody's box. Wait, you think three subs is a week in somebody's box? Dude, I've boxed people with zero subs before, and after like a month, they got 50. And that was with like pretty crazy growth on my part. I mean, I, can, I, I think can... you're wrong. Here's here's what I think. I think that being in your box maybe got that guy, yeah, two thousand channel views, and then it was his fault he converted it into fifty subs. You know, if you had boxed um, someone who was outstanding, then maybe that two thousand channel views or six thousand channel views could have converted into hundreds and hundreds of subs. Yeah, like my buddy Nash Johnson. I boxed him way back when Modern Warfare Two first started. I didn't have no nearly a biggest channel that I do now, and I ended up gaining him over ten thousand subscribers over the next year from just being in my box because he he made good videos and when people went to his channel they liked it. I mean, it, one way to tell if you're making bad videos, I know Joe don't really care about this, is <laughs> it, is one, once you get exposure and you still see your numbers are low. Like like if you got like say you got. 4,000 subscribers and you got maybe 500 views on every video. That's how you know you're making bad videos. Yeah, or, like I hate to talk to people about you know them having bad videos, but it, like if you got a lot of exposure, your channel's not doing well, then it might be the content. If, um, if you have a lot of videos up, right? Like if you're a couple hundred videos in and your channel's not doing well, it might be the content. You know, I... If you have 10 videos in, dude, you just haven't had your chance yet. If you're 350 videos in, the score is posted, man. Yep. And, I mean, it's not a, it's not like uh, like when people make good videos, they get spread around. Like I saw – I've seen like three or four awesome videos in the last week. Like one of them, did you guys see the UConn uh, quarterback doing those trick shots today? The video was awesome. I see it's fucking awesome. Okay, Look, that video one of us saw it. Yeah, so, we yeah. all saw it. It was a good <laughs> video. Um. What's the other one I saw? Oh, the creep. That did you see that music video? Um, and yeah, do the creep. Yeah. And do the creep. Yeah. <laughs> good video. Um, and that uh, Ray William Johnson's new channel, uh, my favorite Martian, which is like blown up like four hundred thousand subs in a in like a month. The guy is fucking outpacing me like no other. Is <laughs> is yeah, it's retarded. Like like I'd look, I was like, yeah, I'm number five today on YouTube. Who the fuck is my favorite Martian? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's how we feel when we look at you. There's always somebody. Well, you know what's cool? You know, like um, I, I try not to get hung up on the things that are that are going well, but um, every now and then there's like an extra special thing. Today I passed the game station in subs. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's not nobody. No, absolutely, it's a good one. So, and then I um, y'all got y'all set your slice too low. I'm coming for Shay Carl. Come before you boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm. <laughs> I think in the last month I've passed, like, just the ones that off the top of my head. I know I've passed Flame Truth, which I felt really weird about because I really mm -hmm. respect them and his channel. Uh, I've passed Sandy Ravage. Um, I think I'm about 
uh, three or four days away from uh, catching up to my buddy X Jaws. Um, I passed X Jaws. I passed Barack Obama. I passed. Uh, yeah. Barack was fun to pass. Uh, yes. So often I'll, I'll pass a guy, and sometimes it's because they've taken a rest. Uh, sometimes it's because I f- feel like maybe my my content's being well received. And then there's the like the blame truth thing where it's like you know a, a tip of the cap, a nod, you know, respectful, like wow. Yeah. Yeah. Blaine Truth makes great vids. He started this whole thing. It's uh, you know, nothing but respect. It's awkward to to pass him in subs. Indeed. And um, oh, I, I passed like a couple of the Machinima's smaller channels. Like, <clears throat> I think I, I know I passed Sports and Realm. Yeah, I think people I are saying I'm past X Jaws. Nope. I, I, I was past X Jaws at one point. My days are numbered. There is a grave with my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. X Jaws yep. is going to come right by. And uh, to tell you the truth, I find it like it, it, I don't want to say lose, right? It makes it sound like it's a one on one competition. But he works so hard. People don't know like how much effort that he has to spend. That first strike thing came out, the, the mat pack. He was up all night long getting footage so that he could come out on day one and just you know blast it and kill it and he did and um you know i on the other hand slept that night so x jaws passed me in subs well yeah that's what happens when you work that hard you know i'm looking at this shit zerka hd has a big channel yeah i passed him and moody sweet a while back i was like damn th- th- he's getting he's, ca- he's capping by 800 guys eight thousand eight hundred every day i'm like i need to start sniping <laughs> yeah every so often i'll i'll see a guy who um like, wasn't on my radar. Like, you know, I, I noticed when I was coming up on Sandy Ravage, like, that was, you know, Sandy's huge in the community. When I passed Circa HD, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't think about him. Yep. But, you know, he's, he's huge, but uh, just somehow wasn't on me. I'm yeah, just saying I, I have more subs than Jaws. I, I'm thinking ahead 10 days. <laughs> yeah, see, <laughs> all right. Jaws, all right, here's the thing with Jaws. Jaws passed me, then I passed him back. Then he passed me again, and now we're getting to the point where I'm going to pass him again. And he may pass me again, and I might pass him again. So it's kind of cool the way me and Jaws went back and forth, because he's passed me twice, and uh, and I'm about to catch him again. Yeah, here's what you need yeah. to do, kind. You need to go get a junk car, buy it for $200, put it out in that field, get, get two things of explosives, one in the front seat, one in the trunk, then sh- spray it down with almost every gun you have, and be like, been another video from SPS Russia, and you'd be like Dude, waving by and then blow the car up behind you. I'm so far ahead of you. I'm painting the thing with red, white, and blue pinstripes down from the front to the back, like the Russian. Oh, you were flag. the junk car, like the Russian flag, and I'm gonna be hanging out the window upside down and backwards, shooting a gun at, at targets while someone drives the car for me. Okay, so I'm way ahead of you here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Kyle. I, I, but one I thing think I don't I understand can last about longer to a taser than you can. I bet you I can last longer both of you. Oh my god! I don't know wings. You know why? I know I'm you're gonna say because you're bigger, right? You have more mass. No, well, kind, yeah. kind of, sort of, same, the same difference. I have more, I have more surface skin than you guys. There's more area to go through. Um, I can take you in a taser battle. No, we, we're not doing a taser battle. We're doing who can last longer on a full yes. day. Yes. I'm, We're not I'm trying to hit you. Bring it. When I get to post a video. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you guys know you got to be 25 years old to rent a car? Yeah. yeah. What the hell is that about? You might have to be drive, over 25. You got to be 25 drive a taxi, too. That's hey, Paul, t- Kitty, where do you live? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> this is out of the little board. Like, what? She's in Hawaii. Do you live in the southeast? Oh, she's in Hawaii. That's right. Yeah, no, she won't. Be you know, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, what, what got me down the other day about X Jaws is I seen a video that was two minutes long. It was like a, a one in the chamber gameplay. He loses, doesn't finish in the money, and the shit's got ninety eight thousand views. And I'm sitting thinking, I could work my ass off all day and not get ninety eight thousand views. <laughs> He's got one thing I've noticed about my channel and other channels. There's a momentum that you build when you're uploading big videos and and they just keep going. They snowballing each other. Each video gives each other video ten thousand views. Yep. When you go to some of my recent videos, the ones with three, four, five, six hundred thousand views, and you look in the uh, statistics, like they're all borrowing ten, fifteen, twenty thousand from the videos that were uploaded. You know, that same day, the day before, the day before. 
And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, I'm gonna have like a, a whole series of videos. Like I've got, I've got, I've already bought the the stuff. I've already, I've got stuff that's showing up in the mail. I've got videos planned out. I'm gonna have a cameraman. So, Joe, Joe if you want to duck out, that would be cool, man. I, I don't, I feel like I'm holding you here. You got to train in the morning. Oh no, no, I'm I'm driving in New Jersey in the morning, but I'm all right. I'm okay. All right, man. Yeah. Cool. And if you ever want to. Uh, yeah. If you ever, if you be, be an FPS Russia, Russia video, yeah. If you ever want to be up FPS Russia, or, or even better, Joe, seriously, if you let FPS Russia be you open a video, <laughs> I'm just saying. saying. But but I'm you saying. you got to do like the the voicemail message on my phone or something. I can still follow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little zone. Got very lucky that you that he was not here when you called. <laughs> it's it's like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip that from the podcast. The audio is messing up. <laughs> Yeah, the audio messed up on that, but yeah. <laughs> Joe, man, I'll, I'll give you my best fight. I will see if that 15-second uh, thing can last. We can do it. Wait, wait, where'd you say you live? Is it North Carolina or something? That's right. Not that far from Boston. You know, if you guys decide Oh, to do... you know what? I'm going to Boston. When are you coming to Boston? March. Let's do the video. <laughs> All right. I'm coming to my gym. Oh, man. I would do that. I would come to your gym, and what I would What is going to be running tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> that chain. He's got the rock music playing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, hell, x is about to pass Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, shucks. How am I going to last 15 seconds against Joe? I need a plan. <laughs> I need a plan. Keep my chin down, my elbows tucked in. I'm telling you, man, you know, it's just, just like me fight a bear. <laughs> Just like if I bring pepper spray, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Run away while spraying in the t- <laughs> my arm out. I don't know about He's you, Kyle. Up. I fight bears with forty-five caliber handguns. That's what I, that's way I Dude, fight. I, would, I, I wouldn't want to bring a forty-five to a bear fight. I'm not gonna lie. I well, want that take a bear down. I want that five hundred Smith and Wesson. Uh, slug. You know, Dude. I'm looking at it this way. You get a 45 all faster and more accurate than you 500 Smith & Wesson. That's a one-shot wonder. You got – it's not that. The recoil's not that bad. You can it's get got six it. rounds, <laughs> but you, you're going to get maybe three all for that big-ass grizzly bear. I guess yeah. closes well, the gap. Like, like, if I had to choose, like, it, like if somebody said, all right, pick a gun, the, a grizzly bear's coming for you in 30 seconds. Rifle. No, I want a, I want a 12-gauge shotgun, and I want those rounds. Uh, like I was using my video the other day. It's a one-ounce slug with three double L buckshot. That's what I said. I mean, I know. I just, I just what I said. I said I'm gonna agree with Woody on this one. Oh, I say, if, you, if, if using shot, if using a shotgun, you better be doing slugs because yeah, it's, buckshot it's, one ounce, fierce. it's a one-ounce slug with three double up uh, buckshot. Hey, do you guys want to talk about Not me. false categorization or just like, don't, let it go? Just let it go. I don't want to talk about it. It's, honestly, it's nobody's business. On the, the directors. Here's what I want. I'd want like an M14 or something, something 30 caliber semi-automatic. I could see that. M14, like, it, uh, there's some nice, dude, I bet I bet there's a video, uh, a gun you'd love in my gun shop. They, they've got these M14 SOCOM editions, um, and they've uh, got I them like... Get, I can, hey, wait a minute, I can get the uh, dropping case of that. Better than the slug could be an SMG, not an SMG, an LMG. Like yeah, and Alan, uh, of course. Yeah, destroy a bear. Look, yeah, you, 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 I mean, <laughs> I just think I, of that first. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's what I saw. It's terrifying. Like the, the amount of fire. I mean, like, don't the get, saw. Don't get you, fucked up. People in the videos are like, "Oh my god, how can you hold that with no recoil?" I could easily fire a saw in each hand. They, they, it weighs like I don't know how much it weighs. 10, 15 pounds. About 30, 30 pounds. Twenty eight point eight. 28.8 pounds. I'm gonna, that sound is so accurate, I need to check it. The go for it. Going round 43, boys, just so you know. It's called the FN Mini. That's what this saw's actual name is. Well, I think there's there's different. There's different Wait, versions. It's, of a French, it's a French is weapon. It, is it the M249 light machine gun? Yes. It yeah. weighs uh, less than 20 pounds. It's 50. Yeah, I was actually thinking about my damn rifle, the M95. Yeah, I've um, it's it's a really cool fucking rifle to shoot, and the way it loads and everything. I would love to be trained on that rifle because I got I got I had the opportunity, to, you know, to like load it up myself and feed the belt in and all that stuff, and it was just really cool the way it locks together and the way it feels in your hands. It feels so good in your hands. It's like I have 
you feel like He Man. You have the fucking sword of Grayskull. You just know when you're holding that thing that like you could easily take out. You know, your there, local there's people. no animal on the planet that could fuck with you. Oh no, no animal. I'm talking about like a police department at this point. Like, I mean, the SWAT team wouldn't want to fuck with you. It's serious business. And the rate of fire is just, just you clear those 50 rounds in, I don't know, two and a half, three seconds, something like that. It's crazy. I, I've been wait, I'm waiting for the FPS Russia with the Dylan chain gun. That's what I want to see. Man, you can't get a hold of one of those, and they cost like 40 grand to fucking shoot. You're gonna, I'm going to get an AUG this weekend. I'm going to shoot an AUG and prob, maybe a Tommy gun if they got one. Um, I'm going to have some trick shots where I shoot. I'm uh, going to put the rifle over my shoulder and use a mirror to shoot some cannibals. This is where you get sponsored, son. Yeah. The, the, I, I've always wanted to shoot one of those big-ass fucking mini guns. It's Dylan chain guns. Yeah. I want to shoot a Tommy gun. That is firepower. With the now, crank on the side? I got one of those. Get out. The crank? You mean is a, that not Gat- a Tommy gun? Gatling gun. Thank you. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, I, dude, you, you should have been. Remember when uh, I had that AK-47 video where the car caught on fire? They had one there that day. They had a cannon really? that day. The guy was like, "You ever <laughs> I got, hear I got, that I got, anthem where they say bombs bursting in air?" He's mm-hmm. like, "This baby right here, that's what they're talking about." <laughs> and for real, it was awesome. You he shot a car with the thing. Well, when you come up here, I got a stick mag, Thompson. Is it full auto? No, it's semi-automatic. We'll see. I got <laughs> you can you can. Man, we can just hook the gun apart and we can make it full auto. I don't want to be part of a felony that that, that, that gives you twenty five to life. Like, no, none of that. Kyle, you don't have a license for full auto. It doesn't matter. I don't. I. You don't just get a license to shoot a full auto gun. I, like if, if his gun was licensed full auto, I can go over there and shoot it. It anybody can shoot it. It's it's the, that works. It's Kyle, the act of possession. Let's, hear, let's let's listen to your complaint. You're complaining about shooting a gun that they don't know if the licensing's on it or not on a YouTube video, which I can easily just take it out of full auto within 10 minutes after you ah. shoot the gun. Honestly, like, you would probably be more likely to get in trouble than anybody. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't want Nobody would I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want a quarter million people watching me do something illegal. Well, yeah, I mean, you're not going to be shooting the bar gun, up here. You might want <laughs> to not put that on YouTube. Like, like my, I, my bar is very illegal. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, many times in my videos, people are like, you know, don't. Th- wh- when are the police going to catch him? It's like, dude, do you really think I'm doing something illegal and then showing it to, to three, four, five hundred thousand people? Nothing I'm doing is illegal. What did you do with that AK? Did you bump fire it? Yeah. No. I got a bar that's been transferred over to being able to accept belt fed ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> it's a replica bar. It's not an actual one, but wings. Did you see that thing? All uh, kitties dual com. Uh, with the, uh, the the Minecraft house. <laughs> that was good. That was good. The Minecraft house that she did with Russia. She did one, and uh, it. Who did the? Who was the guy in that one? Paintball. Who was the guy that you did the dual com with that wasn't Russia? I'm waiting for her in the stream. Oh, the. It was dual calm with that chick I slept Dicta- with last night. Oh, <laughs> dictation guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, eat by diction, yeah. So she did. The, she was the girl in this dual calm, and uh, he pretended that he like slept with this random chick and barely knew her the whole time. And he's, she's like, so do you like video games? And she's like, like Pac-Man? <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, you, you missed it. Yeah, somebody tweeted it to me. What do you, you play know, paintball? Do I play paintball? Have you ever played? No, but would I would. You like to? Yes. You know a game I've always wanted to play. I always wanted to play the airsoft stuff. Paintball is the way to go. But um, paintball hurts, right? Yeah, the airsoft hurts too. That's the way to go. Paintball, yeah. yeah air, airsoft is the little ones that go. That that airsoft is. Airsoft, yeah, but, um, I'm not gonna lie. It's airsoft fucking gay. Airsoft is like the anime version of cartoons. Okay, it's the guys who take it way too fucking seriously and want to like. And, and their dream was to be like uh, in the Navy SEALs, but it turned out all they could do is shoot people with BB guns. Paintball's really fucking cool. Yeah, they're a little bit more P- BB guns, dude. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go, I'm with Kyle. You, I like the pain aspect. Like I, I know that I suck go, at first, but that's. 
it's not real unless it hurts. There should be some penalty penalty for for the mistake. airsoft goes at what fifteen hundred feet a second. Oh no, God, no, man! Come on. I might you be think, thinking of a pellet gun. Yeah, you think they're gonna shoot people with shit that breaks the sound barrier? <laughs> <laughs> I go through your head. Yeah, the people. Let's, the let's see. Right? Let's see how. Let me see how fast airsoft goes. Rifles shoot. All reason I'd like to go airsoft is you actually get guns that look like real guns. Oh, that's not it, important to me. It's 330 feet a second. Outdoors. So a lot of the paintball guns look like real guns, so I've got a paintball gun here uh, sitting next to me that looks like an MP7. <laughs> oh, man. They're asking yeah. me if I use an airsoft gun in the Civil War. No, <laughs> I didn't. I'd like to have a couple Civil War guns, but I don't like black powder weapons. I've always tried to stay away from them. If I got a Civil War gun, it'd be like a Henry 44 or something. I was thinking about doing a black powder gun, uh, video um, on the other day, but um, I need the caps and the powder, and I don't spend. It was gonna be like a twenty-five dollars just for the powder, and I was gonna shoot it once. I, I know that sounds cheap, but like honestly, it's it's not fun shooting those things. You you stink for hours. You have to take it's a shower. It's dangerous shoot shoot shooting those things. What are you well, talking about? I, no, I'm not the modern ones. Like mine's a, a I remember bolt action. Remember, max I ammo. Max that. ammo. I remember a guy tried to sell me a Colt Dragoon one time for, uh, I think it was $90. I was about to take it. I was wanting to take it, but I figured the gun was stolen because it's so damn cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I had right, one man. that was hotter than a $2 pistol. Yeah, man, you should have taken that. Yeah, yeah but it was like, it, what, what turned me off was the black powder. Like, he, it was one of those, it was one of the newer Colt Dragoons where you could actually take the cylinder out, put all the stuff in, and put it back in so you could actually switch cylinders in between it. So you can have yes. like four or five cylinders made up. But uh, black powder is such a pain in the ass. Well, like the modern ones, like I don't know about, I'm sure the Coat Dragon was black powder, but like the, the gun I've got takes these uh, cylindrical like tablets that you drop down the bar barrel. You just drop. Oh, no. Socrates, can you crawl over toward me? Joe, you got any uh, experience in handguns? Uh, not much with handguns. I, got, uh, I, I played a good amount of paintball. I haven't played much with airsoft either. You ever play with real guns? We talk about real guns here. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, um, I, I've been hunting a little bit, like as a kid, you know, but nothing. If really. you can get over here to where the zombies usually pile up, I can pick you up, like the top of the stairs, maybe on the. <laughs> uh, I thought he was talking to Joe. I thought it was an awful. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, baby. To his yeah. Rifle. <laughs> if you can get over here, I've got enough guns for your whole family. But nope. Oh man. <laughs> oh. It, I never liked hunting, but the reason that I never liked hunting is it's too easy. I might have to try bow hunting or something. Take off because... on the thing. Because you get a thirty caliber rifle, you get up into like a tree stand or or like one of those one of those those shades or those hide me's, hide. where you basically yeah, and you just the deer don't never see it coming. I mean, they have no chance whatsoever. I tell you what, the most fun I've ever ever had hunting was bow hunting. I've killed maybe five deer with the bow. I started when I was like twelve. And I failed like the first two or three times out. And that was like, and you, when you see the deer, uh, you know, 10, 20 yards away and you're up in a tree with a bow, you have no like comfort zone with like, yeah, he's dead, man. He's dead now. Like if I'd seen him and I had a rifle, it's like I could do this one handed literally. But when you see him with a bow, you're like, oh, God, don't fuck this up. Stand up slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Put the arrow in the knock slowly. Clip your release on slowly. Draw the bow slowly. It's it's a whole different ball game, And you're. There's so much adrenaline going through your system. Like, like when I was 12, I had a 60-pound bow. Uh, that's the draw that you had to pull back. And then compound bows have a release factor where it's like 60, 70 percent. So you only have to hold back 60. To, you only have to hold back that percentage of the uh, uh, the total weight when you're actually holding it back and aiming. But um, I remember like back then, like I was only 11 or 12, so drawing that 60 pounds in a bow was. I mean, it wasn't like gonna. It wasn't like hard, but. It was, it was, you could definitely tell, you know, I couldn't sit there all day and shoot it. I could practice for maybe half an hour and I, before my arm got sore. But when you would see the deer, the adrenaline would make you so strong, dude. I could have easily pulled back a hundred, 120 pound bow because the, that, that 60 pound bow always just felt like it was nothing at all. You'd be so like those dumbasses trying to bow hunt bear. You ever see that shit? Uh, I would not do that. I would not do that at all. <laughs> If I had to go hunt bear, I would bring my I'd bring my M1A. 
Honestly, I feel sorry for the Bears shooting them with a bow. That's that's a really, I mean, that's going to be really painful for the Bear. Yeah, it'll probably go ha- almost halfway through them, but you got to aim for like the heart or some shit. One yeah. arrow ain't going to take a bear down unless you get him right in the heart. Yeah, seriously. And I mean, the thing about aiming a bow, I mean, bows are just as accurate as rifles are at 30, 40 yards. Like, like people don't realize that the bow will shoot incredibly it'll go through a tree. accurate. It won't go through a tree, it'll stick in a the tree. They go about 300, 310 feet, per, 300, a little over 300 feet per second, the way I remember it. But like, I see my, my, my I never owned a bow. My buddy Andy had a compound bow, and he shot like a, a pine tree, and that bitch went stuck out the ass end of it. it. Didn't go all the way through it, but like the arrow hit it, and the head came out the back of it. I, I don't see. know how this happened, Socrates, but if you could pick me up, that'd be stellar. <laughs> Kyle, I, see, I hear a whole lot of that going on. I'm a little 44, man. All right, I'm playing <laughs> zombies on a level that has never been seen before. Mm-hmm. Or perhaps. Socrates is poning a level. I have 1,200 kills, and maybe Socrates has 3,300 kills. But that is neither here nor there. That is neither here nor there. Socrates is a god at Call of Duty. I don't, I don't know how he does what he does. Thank you, Mr. Socrates. You know, I watched um, X-Cal play Zombies. This was the other night in this like his Ascension. Like He played it when it first came out. And he was going for body shots instead of headshots right off the bat. Why is he doing that? Is it more point efficient? There, if, if that's what he's doing, then yes, it has to be. He 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 takes zombies uh, very seriously. He's always got a scientific approach. He can tell you how many bullets plus knives it takes to take them down at each level. And Excal yeah. spends a lot of time on his zombies. <laughs> he was totally doing that too. He was like, you know, four shotting them to the belly, then knifing them. And <laughs> yep. And you can bet that that's the the most efficient way. Uh, you're right, Kyle. It says a 70 pound drawback with a 30 length with a 350 grain arrow is about 295 feet per second. Yeah. The uh, the the real uh, changes that, is, that they've had in technology is the uh, the amount of uh, release there is uh, as far as like how much weight you've got to hold back. Because if you think about it, like the the bows that the Indians had and the long bows that like uh, they had in medieval times. If it's a 100-pound draw, then once you get it back, you're still holding 100 pounds of weight. But with modern bows, it might be a 100-pound draw, but you're only holding 30 pounds of weight. So you can, you're able to hold the bow back much longer and make a much more accurate shot. I would I hate to take a shot. I still bow. take a rifle at 2,700 feet per second. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I've seen, the thing about bows, though, man, like the, the broadheads that are on some of those things are basically, uh, uh, you know, they're razor blades that, that fold out. Um, probably, two, I think two and three quarters inches is the is the cutting uh, thing. So imagine a, a two and three quarters inch gash straight through your body. It's they're incredibly lethal. You know, um, I was, you ever see the like the how how guns evolved, like when they first started getting used in battle and stuff. Yeah, they first got started used in battle during the medieval times. They they actually had this gun. It was a black powder thing, and it was like a stick with like three barrels on it. Mm-hmm. And it, and they, each barrel had like what I don't know what they called it. It's basically grape shot, and they put it in there. And the reason pe- the reason that that guns beat the sword and the shield is because nothing it no 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 armor they could create was efficient enough to use in battle yeah. to stop this. Like they had they could they put heavy enough armor on to stop the bullet, but it would wear them out so badly they'd be they'd be sitting ducks for like people with swords and shields on the other team. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, the, you know, side. and then back even before that, in in uh, in China, you know, you had them like tying rocket bottle rockets onto basically arrows and shit and shooting them at each other. So like, the evolution wow. of the gun's been a, been a cool one. Everybody agrees that we shouldn't have it. The, the gun has probably saved so many people's lives; it's ridiculous. I, I guarantee you, saved more people's lives than it's killed. Wait a minute, have you forgot about war? We're not talking about war situations. We're talking about civilian situations. We're talking about guns. In war situations, everything kills. So, it, no matter if it's a sword, the Black Plague, you know, cannons. You, get, you can't factor that into a, a device. A device is natural use. If you're caught out in the wild, would you rather have a pocket knife or a twenty-two rifle? That's what I'm going to have to do. Now, a 22 rifle will probably keep you alive for a while, but the pocket knife, I can only too. 
Yeah, By the way, I ordered a, I got an eBay video tonight, and uh, I got really lucky with, like, a bunch of auctions. I got, like, a $100 uh, survival backpack that came with, like, all this shit for $25. And then, um, and then I got one of those Bear Gorillas uh, fire starting knives for, like, 38 cents. Yeah, I want a knife like Bear Grylls has. That, that, he, has a, he has a nice knife that when it goes on his belt, oh, I like that. Oh, he's got no, he ain't got a multi tool. He's got a like a, a, a straight blade. Oh yeah, those are pretty expensive. I've got a couple of nice knives, but I don't have one that's like meant to do that. I've got a Leatherman multi tool. I just got a couple of those. If but... I had to do some of that Survivor Man shit, the most important tool I would bring with me would be like a piece of flint and a twenty two rifle. Twenty two rifle is probably the best survival tool you can have. I wouldn't bought so I wouldn't bought five thousand rounds twenty two today. It's funny you said that. Yeah, if you ever surviving in the wilderness or going on a camping trip, I suggest taking a twenty two rifle with you. Because even if you get lost, that twenty two rifle is enough to kill like rabbits, birds, and stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to trap or make a snare or trap to, to, to catch. And you'll be eating a lot more and you have a lot more energy to survive with. And you can carry a pocket full of twenty two, that's fifty, sixty rounds. If you're a good shot, that can last you months. You know, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna say this. I've been planning on doing a video series, FPS Ru Russia versus Wild. No. Oh, <laughs> man. That's a brilliant idea. That's why I ordered that stuff off eBay. Um, so basically, I would spend, say, three days, be bugs, Kyle? three days in the wilderness. Um, I haven't decided what I would take with me yet. I'm definitely taking um, one of the space blankets. I'm definitely taking my knife and my uh, magnesium fire starter. Um Definitely taking it, some kind of gun, whether it's a, just a 22 pistol, something really basic and with very limited ammo. Probably, like you said, like a 22 rifle with 10 rounds of ammo, something like that. Um, and basically, I'll have my first aid kit, water well, purification. Well, you might as well be realistic, dude. If you're going, if you're going out with, with a 22 rifle with you, you're going to just grab a handful of ammo. That's the way I do it. Reach in the box, grab a handful, put it in your pocket. But I'm planning on, you know, doing like every time I do something, you know, recording it, you know, like, all right, we're going to try to shoot this bird out of the tree. And if I shoot the bird, we're eating that fucker. No. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I, I haven't decided how much food to take I don't, I, and what kind of scenario that I'm going to be like uh, demonstrating. Because the, the, the backpack that I ordered, I'm thinking about just doing this, just taking everything that's in the backpack I ordered, because that's something you would take camping with you anyway. And, and just kind of the scenario would be that I got lost. Because in that backpack, it's got, like, I think three uh, food bars that are, like, uh, 300 calories each or something like that. So that'd be enough to, like, not die. But it's certainly not enough to, like, keep me happy. For if you're only out there three days, you don't even need to take food. You can live three dude, days without food. All right, dude. We're, we're not going three days without food, okay? <laughs> well, if you got to show the FPS Russia survival skills. <laughs> if FPS Russia comes back emaciated, that's not much of a survival skill. <laughs> I mean, you can go months without food, we're, Kyle. Three days ain't nothing. We're very lucky that I decided to go home now. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not that's not survival. That's just like I decided not to die. <laughs> That'd be like a bad ghost was like. So now I'm going to show you the most important tip for survival. You get in the helicopter. You go to the hotel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what he like, does, man. It yeah, zooms out, he looks at his camera, and he, he looks at like one of the like the, the aides that are with him. He's like, give me a fucking Snickers and a Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> I, I picture that. But he, he's eating that fucking larva. He's like, ugh. The camera shuts off. Give me that Snickers bar. I got to watch Dude, this That's town. totally how it goes, man. You didn't know that? Bill no, Greg Gorillas is fake? Yeah, I know Bear Gorillas is fake, but hey, you uh, the Les Stroud ain't fake. Gorillas. Les is the man. That's a Survivor Man, the man. Bear is a fake. Everything about it is fake. You know, he did as soon as the camera crew came around with them, you knew it was fake. You'd have to be pretty ignorant of the way television works to think that there was like a production crew with him and, and not know it was fake. And then uh, later on, they like people would return to the scene of where he went. Like uh, people one might time. You know, one time. No, no, no. Time and time again. He would like, they would have uh, staff go and like pre-assemble rafts and then take all the parts off and leave them on the bank for him. And all he would do is like lash him back up as if he found like, oh look, here's a bunch of like bamboo and la and vines, and I'll make a raft here. I and, mean, uh, yeah, Bruce didn't even try to survive that well. Like, um, I've seen one where he was a castaway, 
and he's like, he cuts like one bamboo stick around to collect fresh water. All right, if you know there's no fresh water on this island, I'd have anything that would hold water sitting out on that beach. Here's what I'll say about Bear Grylls. All right, ob- many of the things he does, it, 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 there's, there's a Hollywood es- aspect to it, and he's not, he's usually maybe, I don't know how often he's actually doing what it looks like he's doing, but some of the stuff he does shows maybe not, um, you know, ingenuity and, like, this survival skill, but it shows that the guy's a great, like, uh, in great shape, and he knows what the fuck he's doing, at least. Like, when you see him climbing up vines, or you see him... You uh, wouldn't do that in normal survival situations, though. It doesn't matter. He's, like, the rock star of survival situations. You know, when you see him doing that crazy stuff, that's pretty cool. Or I mean, So it doesn't watch- matter that he faked it? Because I saw this one guy. He got a nuke, right? So he threw a nade and oh, got, like, God. a six-in-one kill. And then uh, he, he dropped a Harrier or something and got, like, six more, and... Is the fastest nuke I've ever seen. Look, I'm not saying that it doesn't matter that that a lot of it is fake. I'm just saying that it's still entertainment. He, he say, he's saying he's a badass regardless. I can't. Yeah, I, he's, I a, can't bad, he's a badass. I, I, I can't I do half what he does. Like, he, he killed that Mount gator. Everest. He climbed Mount Everest. He killed that damn gator. That's bigger than Mount Everest in my thing. <laughs> they walk up on a fucking six, seven foot gator. And he's like, well, we can't run away from him at this point. So we're going to have to take him head on. He pulls his fucking pen knife out, <laughs> and he kills the bitch. Yeah, dude. I here The reason I have so much respect for that guy is, one, he climbed Mount Everest. Two, he was, he was in the SAS, right? Oh, he not was, long. He wasn't there long. His military career was like three years. Dude, dude. Wings, are you really discounting someone who, who he was my only brother, in my the My brother's in the military longer than him. Not in special forces? He wasn't in special forces. SAS. He says he is. Look here, BearGrills.com. People's done this. People's done this shit right here. So Bear Grylls. He was in the SAS. I know the show says he's in the SAS. They you, they don't just make stuff like that up. You're not gonna make up credentials. The military service. He uh, he joined the Indian Army. He spent a few months hiking in the Himalayan mountains. He eventually joined the British Army after passing United Kingdom Special Forces selection, where he claims that he was one of the four people to pass out of 180. From ninety four to ninety seven, that, that's what two, that's three years. He is in the SAS. Yeah. I mean, that's like saying he was only in he was only in the NFL for three years, man. No, he's not really an athlete. My brother's an Army Ranger. That's about basically the same thing. No, it's not. If it is, you got to take survival I, training. I, the the our equivalent to the SAS would be more like the uh, Green Berets or Delta Force or something. No, Green Berets are teachers. Uh, I, yeah, that's true. But then they would be more like uh, Delta the Force. Ar- Navy, Army Rangers. Or Navy, or Navy SEALs. Navy SEALs are the Navy branch of the Army Rangers. <sighs> I mean, I it, disagree. I disagree. I think I just think the SAS is a more highly trained uh, group of individuals. So he left uh, the military because he was hurt. Yeah. His parachute didn't open. Did you guys say that? Uh, no. no. I didn't say that. Maybe that. Yeah. See? So you discount somebody who occasionally gets a leg up. He is yeah, a, he we'll is see. So he got hurt. so he, I'll see how bad he was hurt. He went and climbed Mount Everest like a year later. Well, <laughs> so no, that he, goes to show you that he's a badass. He wait, got wait, hurt he, and he climbed Mount Everest a no, year later. So he he got hurt in 1996. <laughs> he spent 18 months doing rehab, and then um, he got discharged from the military because he had a broken vertebrae. And um, uh, yeah, so I saw that guy get butt ass naked and jump in a freezing river. I, <laughs> if I had to survive, I'd still take less over Bear. Benny did naked yes. push-ups. Oh, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I'll take the guy who's not a fake you know, every time. What if Bear I, can bring his camera crew? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, well, that changes everything. I'll take the guy with the helicopter. <laughs> not only did Les, he, uh, he videotaped himself, which he said was 65% of the pain of surviving, but he knew how to do it. This imagines... Yeah. Just imagine being out there by yourself and have to set those cameras up to show people how to do certain things. Every so often, Les would fail. Like, every so often, he would, like, you know, throw up the smoke and say, I give up. I'm done. Yeah, but you got to think, if he says 65%, that's a lot of energy wasted that you could have had to do something else. Oh, yeah. He would complain about it on the show sometimes. Like, you'd you'd catch footage of him, like, climbing down what didn't look too bad, like a 12-foot rock face at the top of an icy hill. And he's like, oh my gosh. I just walked over there, 
or I, he's like, I just, what did he do? He would like climb the icy hill, set up the camera, um, descend through the icy hill, walk back down the hill, climb the icy hill while he's being filmed this time with the camera on top, and then collect his equipment. And you're like, oh my gosh, that must have really sucked. And doing this while you're like three days without food. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they don't give him a cameraman. Like, like, just give the cameraman some survival shit. Give him some Snickers and Gatorade and just do it that way. Why not? It makes for credibility. Better it makes it more legit. Like, it, to me, I don't actually like watching Man vs. Wild. No. Which one's the fake one? Man vs. Wild, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Survivor Man's the real one. I'm Bear Grylls. And tonight, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to survive on the surface of the moon. First, we'll have to take off. <laughs> <laughs> but using step, rockets. Step one, take <laughs> off all your clothes. Step two, start drinking urine. Step three, <laughs> like, squeeze some elephant poo and drink that. And then just yeah, like, the like, you wouldn't do like, that shit. He's like, that's really gritty. <laughs> it tastes like dirt. It's elephant poo, man. Oh, baby, it's the <laughs> shot the farm into orbit. I mean, you see him, he's nowhere near dehydrated, and he's going to the extremes just so he can go to the extremes. Like, he, like, cut a camel open to drink out of his water reservoir. Yeah, that was awesome. I like, know. That'd be like, a dude, last ditch effort. I you mean, when you're like, about to drop out of his helicopter, slide down a snowy bank, and then start drinking urine. He's like, all right. Time <laughs> to, <laughs> time to would, I would be melting snow before I went to the urine. <laughs> <laughs> you just imagine that he's the kind of guy that you would like, go to the bar with, and they'd be like, "All right, last call for alcohol." You know, everybody would finish their beers, and he'd be like, oh, "I'm still thirsty." <laughs> <laughs> you're like, "Whoa, bear, bear, bear!" No, we'll go back to the hotel room. No, no, <laughs> I'm drink the urine. <laughs> People don't know that urine contains eight percent alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, all this urine was beer just recently. <laughs> I can recycle. <laughs> oh, It'd be nice if we could get less on. That'd be a great too, as show as well. Oh man, that'd be cool. Yeah, and guess what? He wasn't in special forces either, Kyle. He took he took music in school. Yeah. <laughs> well, he needed some survival training then. I bet he got his ass kicked all the time. Who's this? Last. Like I was saying, he has he has one of his bad body types, you know, because he goes like two or three times a year without eating for seven days, and he's still a little little on the heavy side. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I bet he gets back home and he just eats. He's like, oh, oh fuck I bet you first thing's like, I want to own a pizza and a Coca Cola. Oh man, like not to compare myself to Les, but um, we went hiking through Yosemite, like in uh, John Muir Trail. And uh, the first thing we did once we got back and had, like, real food again was just, like, gang rape this giant thing of nachos. <laughs> we went down on it. It was, yeah, we were good. Cool story, bro. Man, it makes me want to try that shit, but I know I'd fail horribly at it. I'm no. I'm strongly considering doing it. I'm, I'm probably Eating nachos? Maybe... No. I think you got this on lockdown. <laughs> going Russia versus Wild. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. I, you want to eat bugs on camera for us now? Maybe. I don't care. The, the The main problem is it's is it rains so much here, and it like if it were dry in the woods right now, it would be like much um, more pleasant. But to be out there in like the muddy woods and like know that it's gonna like sprinkle on you and you're gonna be wet, that's that really sucks. And plus, I don't know. I don't know that you I'm got, gonna... you're in you're in the south, so you gotta you gotta look out for mosquitoes too. So you're gonna be putting mud on your face and stuff. Not this time of year. It's kind of cold right now. All right, slow mode's got to come back on. Look at these guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, Kyle, if you want to do it, we can do it together. I'll do a camping weekend. You can be all Survivor Man, and I'll be like the American, right? With like a full oh, backpack, be... <laughs> and I'll have like a stove and my little propane. <laughs> you, you can eat a bug, and I'll be like cooking up some pasta with sun-dried tomatoes. <laughs> next that year. would actually be awesome. <laughs> Dude, I'm totally yeah. down. We'll do it. Dude, I go backpacking a couple times a year. I'll, I'll just load up my gear and uh, join you in the spring. Yeah, but he's got that little bag that self-insulation, just add water. Yeah, yeah, man, you, you can cook it right in the thing. Like, uh, <laughs> I'll be, you can like eat a bug, and I'll grab my um, what the hell is my pot made from? Titanium. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll wow. grab my titanium cooking utensils and and uh, and eat up right next to you. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't like about Man vs. Wild. He always had that that cup with him that you could like boil water in. Like, you don't get that shit when you get lost. 
he carries the cup everywhere. I think he's somewhere right now with that cup on. <laughs> I, I know. I mean, you might carry a water bottle everywhere. I can picture a water bottle. I saw him show how to boil water in a plastic bottle. That was less. I've done that. That, that, that was I've Survivor that Man, Cup. Times. I That's think like both campfire done, talk. Honestly. Yeah. They, they, what the deal is is the water doesn't get over 212 degrees. It just evaporates. So um, if you throw a water bottle in a fire, then the part that has water in it doesn't uh, melt. Like, it'll just stay that way. So, like, yeah. the top comes right off, and it becomes, like, a cup and boils in there. Then you can have your tea or soup or whatever. Yeah, it's the same concept as, like, how in Florida, like, if it gets cold, they spray the oranges with water because they won't get any colder than 32 degrees but when the ice forms on them. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. It could be, like, be the opposite concept. Yeah. Hmm. Is uh, Joe still here? He's here. He's just quiet. Every so often we hear his dog. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, I'm just listening. Oh, you, can, you, can, you can talk, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm dozing off. I'm going to actually, I'm going to catch you guys later. Oh, all right. Thanks all right, for man. coming on, Good night. Thanks for coming yeah, on. No problem. There, guys. Later, man. Yeah, but like Bear Grylls, I could give to him. He killed the shit out of that alligator. I would never <laughs> fuck with that motherfucker. I saw him kill a pig one time. Screw a pig. All pig going to do gore you in the leg. Alligator will bite your fucking head off. Pigs are mean. <laughs> They can mean. be mean all they want. They as mean as an alligator. I was I went to South Georgia one time. We were going on a pig hunt. Like uh, we, I knew somebody who had like uh, the pigs were like ruining their cornfield, and uh, so I went down there with my SKS. I was like, we're going hardcore. I have nice. my knife. I have my and seriously, it gave me so much respect for those guys who were in Vietnam. I I, I know this situation doesn't compare because I didn't have any people in the woods shooting at me, and there was no fear of that. But South Georgia. That day was just like Vietnam, all right? It was dripping wet from humidity. Like, it, it was literally, like, the, the leaves were dripping. It was at least 95 degrees, and the mosquitoes were so... I, I remember I used to use this coconut shampoo. Mosquitoes love that shit, all right? They love it. <laughs> they love it. I was. It's like me, my dad, and my cousin were walking along, and, and, and I'm back there, God damn it! And they turn around, they're like, holy shit, because there's just a swarm of them around my head. They love the coconut, but no, we're walking through the woods with our with our uh, you know our little carbines looking for pigs, and we uh, we saw one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's you, you, get you, you, ever a, on it? you ever run into a pig with only a twenty-two? Why couldn't um, you shoot the pig? It's because it seriously was like Vietnam. Like the the forest was so thick and like oh, like like no, man. there's no shooting. So my friend, he um, he had like he had a couple of cats. It's Dan, actually. You've heard me mention him. We'll get him on the podcast at some time because he's filled with stories. And uh, um, anyway, so there were stray dogs, like wild dogs in his neighborhood, and they killed two of his cats. And like he has four little girls, and they were all sad and everything. And he and he's like, you know, what would Woody do? And I was <laughs> like, I would shoot the dogs, right? These dogs would die. That that is the you know way that I handle anything that kills my pets. And uh, he's like, really? You'd shoot them? I'm like, not only would I shoot the dogs if they killed my pets, it's a service I offer. <laughs> 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 I will go to your house and shoot the dogs for you. And he's like, no, nah, I don't think I could do that. I'm like, it wouldn't be you. It would be me. I could shoot the dogs <laughs> for you. I could do it. And uh, I, I totally tried to. I, I never did convince him to do it. But, um, but yeah, I was totally down for killing the dogs in his neighborhood. Yeah. Sure. I've done I my think share I, of that. I've told my story about killing all the dogs in the neighborhood. Oh, man. <laughs> that was terrible. We went in so like you, you, ever, you, you ever run against one of those wild pigs when all you have is twenty two rifle? No. Me and my brother, we were raccoon hunting. And when you raccoon hunt, you don't take a high caliber weapon. We had a twenty two pistol and twenty two rifle between us, and we had the hunting dogs. And... Um, we ran across this fucking wild pig, dude. And this mo, he was ready to fight. I guess we got into it like his den or something. So we had to end up shooting that bitch like 30 times <laughs> before that bitch hit the ground. 22 suck for pigs. I feel sorry for the pig now. Ooh wee. I shot a raccoon that? the other day. Get him sure out of the head. Shot him in the head with 357. I had 38s in it, though. Oh, man, you tore his head off. At 38s in it, the 38 wide cutters don't oh. lick their heads though. Oh, what is this? What is it? I got a link I don't here. Know. It's everything I know. Oh. 
That shit we can't talk about with people. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. You want to call it a wrap? Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. All right, guys. That was the Painkiller Already, episode 41 post show. Thanks for coming. <laughs>